what I'm here to do is show you the creative financing side, the real estate. We're going to go through the stuff, everything we went through yesterday. If you weren't here, well, you missed out on that. So <laughs> we started the basic steps of building this $3 million portfolio and how we do it without any money, without credit, without a job. If you're an escaped convict, as was one of the, the slides that, uh, that we used yesterday, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, you can do this. And Rad's going to show you how to, a ways, actually several ways, uh, halfway through this one, how you just accelerate the whole damn process. And if you want to accelerate it and like really accelerate it, we're talking, put it, put this thing on speed, high speed. Uh, yeah, he can, he's going to show you how to do that too. My plays are going to be the same so we can apply them to everybody. This is what you do. This is how you do it. Today, we are talking about creative financing. I'm talking about creative financing. He's talking about creative le credit leveraging. We're going to meld the two together at the end. It's going to probably freak you out a little bit. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you this, the truth. I've seen this stuff and it's, 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 he's right. It's life. It's life changing. If you apply it, if you apply it. So what are we going to do? We're going to talk about creative financing and apparently we are boom. There you go. Look at that. Woo. Everybody's up and running being real creative finance for those of you who don't know that is the name of my youtube channel that is the name of my instagram channel uh being real real estate and the, so if you see the being real creative finance it doesn't say joe writer it says being real uh because that's from who i am if you look for me on on social media that's where you'll find me and today obviously we are talking about the creative financing end of things what is creative finance let's just start there what the hell is it because everybody has an opinion as to what it is and what it might be creative financing in my opinion, and I've been doing this for 30 years. So I think, I think, I think my opinion should count. Creative financing is anything you do that does not require going down to the bank and saying, here's my 20% down or my 10% down or my 5% down, whatever the banks do. Going down to the bank, give them your requisite down payment and buying a house and supplying all of your documents, supplying your income uh, documentation, supplying your income documentation, supplying your credit, supplying everything there is to know under the sun and conforming that's what what that's why they're called conforming loans by the way because you conform to what the banks are asking for if you do not conform or if you do not care to conform conformity is not one of my big things i'm from ohio damn it conformity is not one of my big things if you don't want to conform you don't want to do things normal you don't want to follow the sheep you want to do stuff outside of the box as everybody says then you want to use creative financing because one it's just easier to do most of the time. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you why. It's just easier to do. It costs a hell of a lot less. Anybody can do it. You don't have to have a job. You don't have to have income. You don't have to have credit. You don't have to have any of that crap. Forget it. Throw it out the window. Just because people tell you you need that, that's bullshit. Okay? It is. It's just bullshit. If you have it, great. I'm not saying don't have it. I'm saying you don't need it. So no, you know, know the difference. Just know the difference. What is it? That's exactly what is it. And why you use it? Well, because it's, it's it's easier, it's faster. If you can't, if you don't have that money to go down and get the get the deal done, if you don't have the credit, the income, and all this stuff, you're going to have to go a different route. And you will learn from using it that it's just easier. I have a disclosure coming up here later on in the thing that I have not used conventional financing. You'll see this later on. I have not used conventional financing to buy a property in over 20 years. That's right. I have bought and sold one hell of a lot of property. I bought and owned a lot of a hell of a lot of property. And I've not purchased one of them with con conventional financing. I've used creative financing on every single deal that I've purchased. I'm not saying I didn't use conventional financing when I went to refinance and to hold a property for 30 years. And I want the ultimate lowest rate. And I wanted to go, go ahead and take the time to jump through the hoops and do that crap. No, but when I purchased a property, when I went and got it, because that's when we make our money is when we buy a property. This is why we use creative financing. Why use it? Because you need to act and you need to get it. And if you don't get the deal, what the hell's the difference? What kind of finance are you using? Why? You, now, there are pros and cons, of course. The pros are, we're trying to, we just talked about them. Boom, it's faster, it's easier. More people qualify. You can do everything. Anybody qualifies. Forget more people. Everybody qualifies for this. Everybody qualifies for creative financing because you're making up the rules as you go along. You're being creative. That's what it is, creative. The cons are, it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive. Sure, it's, if you're, whenever you're not, conforming to what you know society wants you to do if you're not going down and filling out all the, the squares in the bank application it's going to come at a little bit of a higher cost what i'm here to show you and to convince you is who the hell cares we're talking about becoming real estate investors and you're talking about a small increase in price to do something by the way this increase in price isn't benefiting me at all 
I just told you I haven't done a conforming loan on a purchase in over 20 years. I'm doing this. Everybody is doing it. That is a successful real estate investor. So you should probably be doing it too. Does it cost a little bit more? Yes. But does it save you time? Does it get you the deal? Does it do all these things to make things possible for you to blow up as a real estate investor? Yes. Which is more important, saving a couple of bucks or never getting the deal and never having the, the couple of bucks to save? Hey, come on, folks. Let's just do it. So let's, let's just go ahead and just go through 12. Or am going to jump in with just a dozen. There are so many, so, so many. I mean, countless, to be honest with you. Uh, and I can go over them with you. Absolutely. No problem. Just ask anytime. 12 creative finance tools you can use right now. These are things you can do right now. You don't need a uh, doctorate. You don't need a master's. You don't need a bachelor's degree. These are things you can do right now. Let's just talk about run through the 12. Maybe they're the most popular. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe you haven't heard of them. But these are the ones that actually, actually are the most popular right now. Let's talk about the first one out. Owner financing. Everybody's heard about this, right? Everybody's heard about owner financing. This is where the owner finances the property for you. Okay, yeah, it's a great tool. It is an absolutely fantastic tool. The gurus will tell you that it's commonplace. You just go out and do it and tell, tell the people to do it. Okay, but the quest, real question with owner financing is why would sellers do this? Why would sellers do this? You need a motivation on the part of the seller in order to get owner financing, folks. I don't care what uh, Pace and Grant and all the rest of the guys are telling you and Ryan and all that. This is not, this is not, it's not, they, so I just said that they're, they're most popular because this is the most popular in people's minds. They're not the most popular thing they're being done. Owner financing has its place in time and it, you need to select when to do it. You need to know how to structure it and you need and you structure it depending on the situation. What is the motivation? What problem are you solving in real estate? This is going to apply to everything we do, by, by the way. You, we're solving problems. What problems are you solving and how does it benefit the seller to do this? Why does it benefit the seller to do anything? How does it benefit the seller to do whatever type of financing you're trying to put together? How does that benefit the seller? It only benefits the seller if it solves their problem. And if you solve their problem, you win. If you don't solve their problem, you lose. Now, this is very common in what we call MFDs, which is multifamily dwellings. We see owner financing much more commonly in, owner, in multifamily dwellings because we're talking apartment buildings, uh, stuff like that, multi, uh, you know, 20 unit complexes or something, because this is a lot of mom and pop shops uh, that own these things. And when they go to sell them, what they're doing is they're getting rid of what they think is a problem because a lot of these baby boomers and a lot of people like that want to manage these things themselves. So they'll go to sell them, but they don't want to lose the cash flow. They love the cash flow. They love the money. And what are they going to do if you give them the money? They need to go reinvest it to get the cash flow because they're retiring. That's what it's all about. So it's really, it's, it's super common in multifamily dwellings that are being sold where people come in and say, yeah, because they know, they already know what better bank can you have than the person who already knows what the property is capable of producing. So you definitely see it in the multifamilies far more than you see it in single families. I'm not saying it's not done single families, but everybody talks about it. And I'm, you know, the gurus tell you, just go do it this way. Well, that's the difference of what we do here. Yeah, there, that's a theory. And I'll tell you how applicable it is. And owner financing is not that applicable in single family residences. It's just not. I mean, think about it. Do you want to finance the home that you own for somebody else? Or do you want that money and you want to move along? Yeah, most of you want to get the money and move along. Unless I can show you how it benefits you and get the deal done. And I can show you, hey, nobody's going to do this, but I'll do it if you do it this way and we'll get you all cleaned up and we'll get your money at an X certain date. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot of ways to structure it. But you can't just walking out there and saying, oh, well, the seller owns it free and clear. That doesn't mean they're going to finance it for you. Absolutely not. But it's a great tool to use when it works. Subject two, folks, we talked a little bit this yesterday. Uh, again, very popular right now. The subject two communities. These things are blowing up. What is subject two? Subject two is when you take a property, subject to, you buy a property from a seller, subject to the existing financing that they have put in place on the property. So in other words, instead of going out and getting your own loan and your own financing, you're just going to take the property subject to their existing financing. Why is this getting so popular right now? It's because of the number of properties that have been purchased in the past two years that when rates were really, 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 really low, I mean, let's face it, they went down to two and a half percent. Right now, they're almost at 7%. People not only have an outstanding rate that you can just walk into, but they have a big problem in that these properties that you bought in the past two years haven't gone up in value. They went up for a little while if you bought them in 2020, you know, one, and then in 2022, they started dropping back. The ones you bought in 2022 are actually underwater. 
So the number of what we do with in the subject two is we're taking this subject to their existing financing. We teach you all about this. Again, these are just 12 tools you can use right now. We'll show how to, we show you how to apply every, each and every one of them. There's a buying the rate advantage to the subject to uh, approach where you're actually coming in and buying someone else's rate. In other words, why would you go out and get a, a loan right now, even if you qualified and you had your 20% down, so forth and so on, and all of those things that go into conforming loans? Why would you do that and take a loan at 7% when you can turn around and get one that's already written at 2.5%? It's called buying a rate. What is the advantage to doing that? There's a huge advantage. We can walk through the math and show you, but you can kind of do it in your head. What, what, how much money are you going to save with a 7% or 2.5% rate over a 7% rate? <laughs> a lot. You're going to save a lot. So this has become very popular right now. If you guys don't know Pace Morby, Pace Morby is the godfather, so he says, uh, the subject to community. And but in all fairness to Pace, he does, uh, he does a lot of work. He has thousands of students uh, that follow him. And this is all they do. This is the only thing they do. So to give you an example of why this can work is that these people, this is all they do, is subject to. All they do, this is the only type of financing they do. Out of literally hundreds of different types of financing, all they do is subject to. Yeah, they're making it work. So does it work? Absolutely. It will work. You have private money lenders, okay? Private money lenders. First thing, first things first, we are not talking about hard money. You have to be able to differentiate between hard money and private money, okay? This is anybody, private money lenders is anybody who wants a good solid return on their investment. They are all over the place. They are all over the place, all right? It allows people to invest in real estate without a big commitment. These are people that are coming in to do the small ends of deals. When you're a little bit short on a deal or you don't have quite enough money, you get an 80% loan, a 90% loan, and from, from our other lenders that we're going to teach you about, but you still need that 10% down or you need the money to, re, to remodel the property, this is where we start using private money lenders. Is it a little bit more expensive? Absolutely. Does it get the deal done? Absolutely. How you find them? I'll just tell you right now. We don't do gatekeeping here, by the way. We don't just throw out ideas and tell you, oh, well, this is it, but not tell you how. You want to find private money lenders to do the small deals for you, the back-end deals, as we call them? I'll tell you right now. You go down to your local county. Don't <laughs> Shows how old I am. Uh, you don't go down to the local county anymore. You just pull it up on your damn computer. You go to your county's web website listing and you look up deeds of trust or mortgages, whichever it is in your area, and you look for deeds of trust and mortgages that have been done on, on real property. Of course, the deeds of trust and mortgages are done against real property in the past two years for $50,000. You set these parameters that have done deals for $50,000 or less and they are not institutional lenders. Let me walk through that once again for you. You go to your county website, this because this is a public database, okay? You go to the county website, because this is where people record their liens against properties. When they lend you money against a property, they're going to record this lien, okay? You're going to go down to the county. You, again, you don't have to go down there. You just sit at your damn computer like I'm doing right now. Pull it up. You're looking for people, people who have lent in the past two years, $50,000 or less, against real property, they've taken a mortgage, 50,000, and are non-institutional lenders. These are not so that you don't get the banks because there's tons and tons of banks and, and, and lenders and alt doc lenders and all kinds of lenders. You want to know who the private money lenders are. And it just spits it out to you right there. Boom, you want to find them? Great. Now you're building your database. You can go talk to these people. You're not trying to sell them anything. You're talking to them about something they already do. You're bringing them what they want. They're, this is like marketing for them. It's free marketing for them. You're coming to them, which is exactly what we try to do is get people to come to us. You're coming to them. This is not hard money. This is private money. Remember that and differentiate from it. These are the people that get you over the hump to get you that 100% financing when you, when you need it. If you're a little bit short on any other type of financing that you need. We're going to use examples of this later so you can see it. This is private money. Private money lenders, how you find them, boom, they're right there. That's how you find them. They're public information. SBA loans. We have to throw SBA loans in as a creative finance tool. People say, well, that's not really creative financing. It is actually an SBA. Whew, all the programs have specific guidelines. Let's just talk about some of the pros and cons right now of SBA loans. SBA is great um, if you're a small business and they're really not that great if you don't have a lot of time. But if you have a small business and you have time and everybody tells you, well, you can't do real estate loans through SBA. I don't know where that started, but it was a long, long time ago because it's absolutely 100% not true. 
S the SBA 7A loan is a general loan. It's general, but real estate lending is definitely allowed. The SBA 504, this requires a 10% down payment, but they'll do 90%. And this is very specific to real estate. You can actually absolutely do an SBA loan. You can go and get these kick-ass loans from the Small Business Administration. It's going to take you a little bit longer. You come in and put 10% down, do an SBA 504. Oh, by the way, what did we just talk about? The slide before, private investors, you need that extra 10% down. Gosh, you can do it. You can do it. We, we, mix, we mix and match everything. Okay, we'll go through that a little bit later too. And you got the SBA micro loan. This is where you own a business. If you've already established your LLC, you can go in, you can borrow up to $50,000 uh, to purchase a rehab property, real property. It's sp spelled out right in there. And the great thing about the SBA, SBA microloan is that it is, it's it's fast-tracked because it's a small loan. It's, 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 it has a cap on it of 50000 So you can move it through the system a lot quicker. So if you just need fit, you have a business and you need fifty up to $50,000 to close that gap between what you're buying already, what you are already got other financing for, and what you need, to, the difference in between, an SBA microloan is awesome. People don't really, because everybody will tell you, oh, SBA, they don't. They just want to loan on businesses. They don't like loaning on property. Again, I don't know how that started, but I've heard it my whole life too. So don't feel like you're alone. SBA can be an excellent source, an excellent source. Raz is going to talk to you about business funding a little bit later, but there can be an excellent source to bridge that gap to get these deals 100% done. And remember, this is creative financing tools. We're running through about a dozen of them today. Credit partners. All right. Let's talk about credit partners. Credit partners will bring you in higher limits on loans. That's the number one thing they do. They allow you, this is somebody who you bring in specifically for the use of their credit. You bring them in to say, hey, I need to qualify for X, Y, or Z, whatever it is. And I'm willing to pay you A, B, and C, whatever it may be, to participate as a credit partner. So I don't qualify for uh, a loan of $250,000, but I go out and I tell Rad, hey, Rad, you, you got your your uh, credit squared away, right? Hey, why don't you come help me on this thing? And I'll give you, uh, you know, 10% of what I earn off the thing. He's not a proactive person. Okay. He's not a proactive person in the deal. We're just going to, I'm just going to borrow his credit. I'm just going to borrow his credit. That's all I'm going to do. I'm gonna bring him in and just say, hey, look, we do have somebody with a 750 FICO score, whatever the minimum is. Okay. They're only helping you on their credit side. They're earning money while you learn the process. This is a key, credit partners. These are not JVs. You don't know what a JV is? It's a joint venture. We're gonna go through those a little bit. It's not a joint venture or a limited partnership. Those are different things. So we you know credit partners only help you out by you borrowing their credit. You're basically, you're renting their credit score, okay? That's it, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, you wanted me to simplify it down. That's what you're doing. You're renting their credit score and they're getting paid for it. And people do this all the time. You want to know how to find these people? There's, <laughs> there's also tons of them available at websites all over the place. Then that's what they do. They broker credit partners for you if you need them it, easily. I mean, literally, I wouldn't say hundreds of different websites, but there's at least dozens that do this. Alt doc loans. Raz can talk about this probably a little bit later too. What are alt doc loans? Alt doc loans are they're a hybrid of conventional and hard money. We haven't got to hard money yet, so you don't really know what that is. Uh, but a lot of you got a kind of a clue. They're a hybrid of conventional hard money. In other words, they're in between the hard money, which is the most expensive, and conventional, which is the least expensive. And what they do, they more, they're more or less expensive depending on if you're doing a conventional or hard money. It allows you to be creative when you're documenting your income and assets. This is why they say alt doc. It's alternative, alternative documentation. So instead of throwing out, they say, hey, I need a W-2. I need your uh, W-2, you've, you've heard this before. Yeah, I need a W-2 or I need your tax returns. And you're looking at it saying, well, my tax returns suck and I don't have a W-2 because I'm self-employed. What do I do here? Go over to AltDoc. AltDoc allows you to turn around and use uh, bank statements. They'll look at how much money you, you deposited in your personal account over the past 12 months and say, yep, there's your income. Because honestly, it is your income. That really is your income if you want to get down to it. I think this is brilliant. I think that Fannie and Freddie Mae Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the government-backed loans should do these. But because anybody can tell you how much money they make, how much money you actually deposit into your bank account. That's going to give you an idea, a much better idea. They allow this. Why? Because they are not government-backed. They are not Fannie and Freddie loans. These are private investors that do things and they can do whatever they want. It, it's also, this is also known as B-paper. You've, you've heard this before, or subprime loans. Yeah, that's what they are. And you have to go to the broker directly to get this. 
actually, you don't have to uh, for some of them, but for the majority of them, you need to go to a, a loan broker, but it's okay. Use the loan brokers because they know all of these programs. They just simply punch it into their computer. They put the parameters into the computer and it spits it out. It spits it out and tells them, okay, this is, you have these issues qualifying. It goes over to these lenders. This is who will do that deal with that weird thing going on. It allows you to have less than perfect credit. It allows you to have lots of things that you don't have to have, that you have to have for conventional loans. You can do it on what's the direct result. It's a little bit more expensive. Everything is price related, folks. Everything is price related. Does it get the deal done? Yes. Who cares? Who cares if that's one or 2% more expensive? But then instead of 7% loan, it's going to cost you 8%. You're going to pay 2% on $200,000 over a year. It's going to cost you $4,000 and you just made $65,000 on the deal. Do you really care about the extra $4,000? Yeah, a little bit, but if it, do you care that it got you the deal when you couldn't get it the other way? No, you do not. No, you do not. Alt doc loans. Now, we talked about credit partners before, and I specifically told you these are not joint ventures and limited partnerships. So let's talk about joint ventures and limited partnerships because this is absolutely part of creative financing. All right. The, you form a separate entity is formed in a joint. This is a joint venture. A separate entity is formed. What the hell does that mean, Joe? You form a separate business. It's a separate LLC most of the time. It could be an S corp, a C corp, or any of these other things that get really involved. I just say form an LLC. You form an LLC. Each party of the joint venture contributes cash or expertise. Okay. So you need to contribute something to the joint venture. You need to be bringing money. And this is what we do because when we're doing stuff, we need somebody to bring money. All right, we'll put them in as a point as a partner on a joint venture. They bring the money, we bring the work. We're gonna we're gonna go do the work. We're gonna buy the property. We're gonna see that it gets fixed. We're gonna see that it gets flipped. We're gonna see that it gets put into our portfolio. Whatever it is that we're gonna do, we're gonna take care of it. That's what we bring. Okay. Now, in a joint venture, you have shared decision making. This is important to remember. It's a different. This is how we differentiate between joint ventures and limited partnerships. Joint venture, you have shared decision making. So. Uh, me and uh, we'll use Shamori. This is a side note. This is what happens in Rad's program. Uh, quite honestly, is that we see people take off and become successful using the tools that all the stuff that he teaches. Um, and then we might lose track with them for a little while. And they're really great people. And Shamori is one of those people. Uh, he's super busy being super successful and doing his his thing now. Don't get to catch up with him enough. So I'm going to use him as an example just so I can. And, and, and Joe, it's never, it's never, it's never where you've been. It's how you've been, right? Yeah. It's never where you've been. It's how you've been. And listen, if, if you guys are not leaving the program, doing your own thing, I'm failing as a leader. I'll say that again. If, if I'm not, if you guys are not developing your own programs and implementing and still on baby food, I'm failing as a leader, right? That means I'm obviously not teaching things that can't be implemented, right? I hope you'd agree, right, Shamori, right? If leaders are not elevating students and mentees to their level or higher, we're doing something wrong. So yeah, wrong. yeah, man. Yeah. So uh, you can have all these other programs that just give you modules and then have a bunch of upsells. If you want that, be my guest. There's a ton of them out there. Have a great time in life. If you want accountability, if you want change, if you want transformation, if you want community, if you actually want some real shit that's outside of credit, how to build a sustainable business, how to build passive streams of income off your business, how to invest your money responsibly, how to do taxes, how to have softwares and systems how to create a personal brand like I did, because that's really what I know. You better get under my wing. You better get into this tribe. I'm not going to beg you. I'm just going to say, literally, I'm, I have an application process now. People can't just join it on a sales page anymore. It's closed, baby. It's closed. You got to apply. And then I look at your, your application. I either approve or deny. I don't need everybody in here. I want the right people. I'm not called to everybody. I'm called to somebody. I'm looking for the somebodies. I'm looking for people who want to step out on faith and change their life. Just cut back on your budget and get into a community. It can change your life. I mean, how bad do you want it? You say you want it, show me, prove it. Prove it with action. When necessary, use words. Action, action takers, implementation. Because Joe can teach you how to be a millionaire in real estate in 12 months and show you how to build. We did yesterday, guys, you missed it. How to build a $3 million portfolio in eight different ways. Some of you guys didn't value it because it was free. You implement those strategies, you're going to be freaking butt rich. Okay? Start implementing shit. Stop being a hearer and start being a doer. Start having analysis paralysis and start actually doing it and get into the fight so you can get hit in the face. And then you can say, okay, 
I can throw out my plan now because I got hit in the face like what Mike Tyson said. Change your life, man. Change your life, sis. It's in your hands. Use your credit card and, 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 and make moves that get you into communities that level you up. No network, no net worth. Write that down. No network, no net worth. Who do you have in your network that you can leverage? Dude, if I have any deal whatsoever, Joe could build me a real estate portfolio. I could shoot content about it. I could get him to a million followers on YouTube like that. You guys aren't ready for this game, man. If people want to take action, let me know and let's blow you up. Keep going, bro. You got it. And, and he's absolutely right. I'm not going to go too far down that that uh, little rabbit hole right now, but he's absolutely right. If If we're not if we don't see people succeeding massively, uh, whether it's in dance program, it's my program, it doesn't matter. If the people aren't succeeding and we don't start losing touch with them and they're only checking in every once in a while, we're not doing our job. Uh, I don't need I don't need you to be on every call. And that's the great thing, uh, honestly, and, and, I ho and I hope this happens for everybody, uh, is that you're able to enjoy some of the success that Dan has, has been able to experience uh, in just a, a very short period of time since he started building out his brand. Something that I've built over 30 years is that, uh, and it, it, this isn't a rude thing. It's just thing is we don't, we absolutely don't need you, um, but we want to have the right people. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need you. I just want you. All right, keep going. Yeah, I want the right people because I want people. It's for me. It's about seeing people succeed. It really is. I don't give a damn if people believe that or they don't believe it because the people that work with me believe it. They experience it. You can talk to them. Some of them are in the chat right now. They know. I give a damn about them. That's what I, I, I need them to succeed. That's what I get out of this. Okay. I, I honestly, that's, that's, that's what I get out of it, but let's stay on, staying on joint ventures. We form our separate entity. We bring in a partner. We'll show you how to find all those people too. Kind of the same way. If you don't know any, we'll show you how to find them. It's really, it's all it's the same way. We found the, uh, the private investors and many other ways. You just, people want, these people want you to come find them, by the way. You're not looking, hunting them down. They want you to find them. Um, each party's contributing something. You have shared decision-making. We were talking about uh, Shimori and I being in a group together. Shimori and I are going to say, okay, great. All right, uh, Shimori, bring me your, your 800 FICO score and I'm going to do all the work and we're going to kick the ass on this thing. And this is where it's going to, but along the way we make decisions, say, hey, you know, this is this duplex over here. You know, it, it, this is this is you know going up in value. Should we, maybe we should flip this and take the cash off the table rather than you know one of us keeping it in our portfolio. What do you think? And you have shared decision making. Hey, this is a you know this, this these windows will cost an extra you know five grand, but a really the house will really pop. Shared decision making. Okay, profits are shared via the agreement that you put together. This is a joint venture. Okay, separate entity is formed. Each party contributes cash or expertise. You have shared decision-making and profit shared via agreement. Now, why do I tell you these things? Because these are great ways to bring people in on deals. And you get deals by working with people, damn it. Uh, this is the whole key to get everything. You can 100% finance anything. with. I'm, I'm just showing you 12 today. I'm showing you 12. There's dozens. Limited partnership. How does it, how's it what's different? Okay, in, the, in limited partnership in the joint venture. Joint venture, shared everything. Limited partnership is a general partner. You have a general partner who you assign as the decision maker. This is one person. This is basically almost an investment opportunity for people. They come in and they invest their money into it. This is done all the time. I do both of these, by the way. Um, I do both of these. General partnerships, I'm sorry, limited partnerships. One person is designated as the general partner. Most of the time, that is me uh, because I'm the one that's going to be making the decisions. The liability also goes with that person, the decision maker, okay? Limited partner, the limited partners have a limited liability. They have no decision making. So I'm going to go to, let's pick on somebody else. Uh, I, I guess I can't see the chat. I don't know who's in here. I saw Shamori earlier. Let's go to Jodine. I see Jodine out there on an iPhone. Jodine, I hope I'm saying that right. Jodine wants to come in as a limited, li uh, limited liability partner on my limited partnership. Basically, Jodine needs to come in and say, okay, I've got 50 grand. What percentage will that buy me of the product? You see that's other one over there on the right, what percentage am I getting of this project for my 50 grand? Or I'm offering to Jody and saying, hey, I'll give you 25% of this project. You invest $50,000. So the profits are going to be distributed via the percentage owned, not per the agreement. That's joint venture stuff, okay? Limited liability partners have no decision making. They're simply entrusting me with their money to do the right thing. I propose the deal to them. I showed them how it works. They say yes or no. 
then they're in a partnership. They're not strictly a lender. Now they're a partnership. They're a part owner of this property. Excellent way to get people who are not, they're off the, they're not quite off the fence yet. Once people do this uh, a lot, they will, they will start moving away from these partnerships and do direct lending. But sometimes people need to feel closer to the process. And this is a great way to do it through limited partnerships and joint ventures. You can raise a ton of money a ton of money doing this stuff. And it really, really, really accelerates your, your, your growth. Folks, there are down payment and assistant down payment assistance programs all over the place. We would say, I could sit here for hours. I did this on Dan's show one time. Uh, we talked about this at length. There are so many of them. I'm going to whittle this down today for the sake of saving time and just say, check your regional state and federal areas because there's down payment assistance programs everywhere. People don't, I think, Ah, it gets me excited, or not excited, frustrated. Maybe it's a little mixture between frustration and excitement. People just don't know. You don't know. Okay, there's down payment assistant programs. You want to go in and buy a house? Now, let's say you're going to buy it for yourself, which is most of these things want you to be buying this house for yourself. But you can always change it into a rental later when you go to buy something else. It's all about your intent. It's all about your intent at the time you do it. There's down payment assistance programs everywhere. You just don't know it. For God's sakes, just search them out on Google. It's that easy. Did you know down payment assistance programs work? I mean, were existence? Maybe you knew a little bit or you heard about it one time. I'm here, hopefully as the expert, to tell you they do. They are they're all over the place. Regional, state, federal, everybody. They're all over the place. They can eliminate your down payment completely. All you got to do is Google them, for God's sakes, and figure out if you qualify under their thing. I'm telling you right now, these down payment assistance programs, a lot of them they are not controlled by how much money you make. Everything's, oh, this is the poor people loans. I don't qualify. No, it's not. No, it's not. These down payment assistance programs run everything from income qualifications to geographical, to uh, economic, to, uh, oh God, what's the word I'm searching for? Uh, it, like types of properties. Uh, you want you say you want to buy property in a uh, reutilization area where they're actually trying to fix the place up. Oh my God, they'll give you up to 125%. 125% of the purchase price. Did you hear me? You're getting 25% more than the purchase price to buy a home. This happens. We do these things. These down, it's, it's down payment assistance programs are absolutely wonderful. And nobody uses, I should say nobody, very few people use them. And I don't know why. I, I really don't. Government grants. Oh, man. You think down payment assistance programs are being underused? Try the government grant program. These are also regional, state, and federal government grants. These are grants, people. They're not loans. They're, we talked about down payment assistance before. These are grants. They just give you the damn money. Okay. You, we could go further down this thing and talk to you about grants. We could talk about what we call forgivable loans, which are just like grants, but you have to keep them for a certain period of time. I'm not even going to go down that run today because there's dozens more of these. I'm just taking about talking about checking your federal, local, and regional government grant websites and finding out what's available for you for free. The government takes your taxes. You walk in, you buy gas. I don't know if you live in California, but for God's sakes, I mean, we're paying five bucks a gallon for gas and at least $2 and 50 cents of that is taxes. I don't know if you guys know that it is it's taxes. So we pay tax when we buy a candy bar. We pay tax on everything. We were taxed to death. Okay. When they're willing to give you on um, these are regional state and federal taxes. I'm talking about when they're willing to give you a little bit of something back, don't be proud. Go take it. Okay. Yes. I can afford some things in life. When my son joined the military, and then went to college, he was eligible, because, not eligible, he could no longer be my dependent because he had joined the military. He would, cannot then go off of dad's income to get his grants and loans. And he, we were talking about it. And I told him at the time, absolutely, <laughs> you take every damn thing they give you, everything they give you, because if you can get something back for the amount of taxes that I pay, go take it. Folks, get rid of your pride. Throw that crap in the wind. Go get these government grants. They have out, yeah, they have requirements to them. Go look them up. I know what the requirements are. They're all different. They're all different. Some of them are income based. Some of them are not. Some are based on, uh, you know, first time homeowners. Sometimes they're based on uh, reutilization areas or, you know, if you're going to grow corn. I mean, there's so many of these damn grants out there. You got to look them up. Many, 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 many of them come without income limitations. These will get you from that gap. Remember, we're talking about creative financing. We're closing that gap to get into the deal so we don't have to pay any money because we don't want to. We don't want to. We can. We're going to talk about that a little bit later too. Syndications. 
buzzword, buzzword of the year. What are syndications? Everybody's talking about syndications. Oh, the syndications are buying everything up. Syndications are simply partnerships, folks. That's all they are. Syndications. That's it. What are they? How do they work? It's we see so you hear the buzzword syndication. You're talking about the things we already talked about. Okay. You're talking about joint ventures. You're talking about limited partnerships. That's what a syndication is. It's simply a group of individuals who form together to pool their money together or pool their efforts together, whatever the hell it is they're contributing to each, each person's contributing on their own and they form a syndication. So they can bring in multiple people to work on a project basically that's the, it's it's a buzzword yes it's it's actually applicable but it's a buzzword it covers a lot of things you want to form a partnership a limited partnership you want to form a general partnership you want to form you know a joint venture all these things are syndications now everybody says in a syndication a REIT which is a real estate investment trust no they are not a REIT you simply put your money in it's like buying a stock you can actually trade your, your position and you can buy and sell your positions inside of a REIT. Syndications is me and three of the people that are listening right now getting together to say, hey, let's go buy this property together. That's what a syndication is. I mean, you boil it all the way down, that's what a syndication is. So you hear this in the news all the time. Oh, the syndications are buying up these neighborhoods. Syndication is just partnerships and people are learning to do this because of the current state of the economy and how much opportunity is available. Then they realize, hey, you know, this isn't so hard. We can do this. I just need to bring in a couple of other people. To be honest with you, I'm working with some people right now all around the country that I haven't worked with before. And we're creating little syndications. Why? Because they have stuff they do in their area that I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not aware of. I don't, I'm not in that market, but I can get involved with it. I can get involved by just coming in and saying, okay, well, yeah, I'd like to be a part of that. That's what a syndication is. It's not just as a fancy word. Okay. Now we're going to get into hard money lending, the lending that will make you millions because you're going to find out that I'm a big hard money fan. So let's just go ahead and get that out of the way right now. Hard money lending, I love it. Hard money lending, whoa, let's just go ahead and break it down because there's things that is and there's things that it is not. Okay, hard money lending is an amazing alternative to conventional loans. It can be used for speed and convenience. I always use private money when I'm purchasing property. That may come as a surprise to a lot of people we talked about a little bit earlier, okay? Why would I do that? It says right here, it costs 10 to 12% interest. And it's going to cost you one to three origination points up front. So if a property is costing you 200 grand and you need a $200,000 loan, I should say, that, that $200,000 loan is going to cost you between two and $6,000 just to get the loan. So why the hell am I using this? Why do I use it? I use it for speed and convenience. I move quickly. I move quickly or I don't move. Because in real estate, you have to be, have the ability to walk back and forth very, very quickly. If you don't, you're going to lose deals. You have to have the ability, and this is what hard money lending does, which is why we think outside the box. This is why we we, we use as many creative financing uh, avenues as we can, because we want to be able to apply each one as quickly as we can to get the deals that make sense. And right now, there are a shit ton of deals that make sense in this economy. There are a lot, and that won't be around forever, but let's stay on hard money lending, okay? Hard money lending, this is basically non-institutional is either trust or individuals who are lending their money directly. They ultimately make the decision whether they will lend or they will not lend. All hard money is not the same. Okay. All hard money is not the same. You go to a hard money broker. We have uh, hard money brokers uh, within uh, my program. There are hard money brokers within uh, RAD's program. They're out there good people and they're not even all the same. They all want to, they all, kind of focus in different areas. So this is important when you're going out to look, find hard money because you want to be able to talk about to people that are in your, they'll tell you straight up. They'll say, oh crap, you're doing apartment buildings. We don't really don't do apartment buildings. Oh, you're doing raw land development. Yeah, we don't, we really don't do that. And then they don't, they work with investors. The brokers work with the people who actually supply the money and they're going to work within a niche. Okay. They're going to not specific down to one thing, but there's some things that they just don't have people that they don't do. And they should tell you this, the ones that are real honest, handsome Contreras. I don't know if you're out there today, handsome Contreras, boom, good guy, good hard money broker. will tell you straight up things that he just doesn't do. He does a lot of stuff. He does it nationwide and there's stuff he doesn't do. Some want you to have experience, okay? Fixing and holding or fixing and flipping. Let's say you go in and you want to fix a property and keep it in your portfolio, or you want to fix a property and flip it. Some people want you to have an experience. So they're going to say, hey, have you done one or two of these? Yeah, they, they want you to have some. Some don't care. Most want 70% loan to value restrictions. Loan to value, LTV, loan to value is the amount of the loan versus the cost of the property. A 70% loan to value, for example, if a property costs $100,000, they will lend you up to 70% of that money. 70%. Some want 65% loan to value. 
property cost $100,000, they don't want to be out more than $65,000. Some care about credit. Some don't. Okay. The one constant in hard money, and this is the thing that gets you over the top, folks. And Dan and I talked about this yesterday, and I cannot repeat it enough. The constant in real estate and specifically with hard money is, is it a good deal? Is it a good deal? It's going to get funded. If it is not a good deal, you are just going to be wasting your time. Good deals get funded. Good. Don't worry about the money in real estate. It's what everybody thinks is the problem. And I'm here to tell you after 30 plus years, it is the last thing you need to worry about. Money finds the deals. If you've got a good deal, you will get the money. If you've got a deal that makes sense, you will get the money every single time. Not some of the time, not most of the time, every single time. If you fall within these parameters that we set out specifically, which by the way, is sub 70% LTVs, after repair values and other things like that, you're going to get funded every time. And they're just not that hard to find. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Good deals get funded, period. They always do, they always have, they always will. I've never seen a good deal not get funded. I've seen a lot of deals in my time. Woo. Thin deals do not get funded and they waste your time and effort. And here's what you'll find, uh, just for an example. And I know we had a lot of slide decks and stuff to go through today, so I'm not gonna take up all your time. But here, when, you, when you're bearing down that 70% mark, which we can expand on a lot. So everybody knows we never wanna be over 70% of the LTV, of the loan to value, the after repair value of the property. We never wanna be over 70%. We have to have that 30% buffer in there. There's a ton of deals out there that are just above that. They're at 70%, they're at 71%, they're at 72%. These are deals that people chase forever because they're so close to getting done. Yeah, guess what? There's a ton of fish out there in that pond too. There's a bunch of Florida strain, largemouth bass. You know, they're in there, but you got to find them and you got to catch them. Okay, they're hard. That's hard to do. <laughs> that's hard to do if you don't have the right equipment. You have to be below 70% LTV and you will get these deals fun. Quit. When we work together, when we don't work together, I'm telling you this right now, quit chasing deals that are skinny and just go out and spend that time finding another deal every time. If it's skinny, don't do it. Don't waste your time. Move on to the next one that is. People say, well, it's so close. It's soon. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's sitting there and it's really close because nobody else will do it. Hard money gets the deal done. Now, Bear down and, and, and follow me on this one because we're going to go through a couple slides here that's going to require your attention. If, you, if you're out there goofing off doing something, 70% uh, of value is far more than 80% of purchase price. Let me repeat that. 70% of value, hard money lends on the value of property, not the purchase price. Conventional and conforming loans, banks and the other ones, deal off of purchase price. All right, guys, that is such a huge deal because- the way that business credit does not report the personal credit, that can look like something that's not a big deal, but it is a big deal for those of you that know credit. In the real estate investing world, that right there is a game changer. Joe, break that down again for them because that Absolutely. is so key. It's the devil's in the details. Devil's in the details. Right? I'm going to give it to you detail. again. I'm going to give it to you again, and I'm going to break it down on some slides. The next slides coming up here are going to break it down for you. So stay, that's what I say. Stay with me. Some of the, some of my rhetoric and bullshit is about to stop, and we're going to start doing some math. Uh, so 70% of value is far more than 80% of purchase price. Because if your purchase price is $200,000 on a property, because that's what they're going to sell it to you for. Let's look at this example, because we're going to see this example a lot. You saw it yesterday. You're going to see it a lot. Uh, this purchase price is $200,000. You know, because you went out and looked at this place. And you thought, man, if I put $20,000 in repairs into that place, you looked it up. You found out big, big, big thing we do is analyzing the values, okay? Analyzing value. We teach you how to do that. It's not freaking hard. It's really not nearly as hard as most people think it is. It's just not. Um, we know. We know that after we get, we're done with those repairs that this place is going to be worth about 300,000 because we can see the comps. We can see the comps in the area that are selling for $300,000 when they're fixed. Okay, great. Then we know it's worth about $300,000. Purchase price is 200,000. We're going to have to put 20,000 into it. The ARV, the value is 300. So if we go conventional conforming, we're going to get 70% of the value, which is 300 or 80% of the purchase price, which is 200. 80% is a bigger number, but it's of a smaller number of the 200, okay? That's what you have to realize. And let's, let's, let's just show you an example. Yeah, good, it's the right one. Okay, let's look on the left side of the screen first. Conventional financing, 
Okay. This is a 200,000. Remember, we're talking about a $200,000 purchase price that we need to put $20,000 repairs into that's going to be worth $300,000. So right here, let's walk through the math together. $200,000 purchase price times 80% leaves you with $160,000. They're going to loan you $160,000 on this house because that's that's you're capped out at 80%. This is just general general rule of thumb stuff. This leads you with leading $40,000 towards your purchase price. Plus you still need the $20,000 in repairs. So you need 60 grand, right? There you go, bottom line. Let's move over to the right side of the screen. You do this on a hard money loan. All of a sudden we're looking at 300,000 as the ARV. Now we're taking a smaller percentage, but let's work it out. Our smallest percentage, 70% cap. It's, this is what we'll call a loan amount on a hybrid because we're gonna do it between, it can, we're gonna do it between the, the repairs and the, the purchase price. Okay, it's a hybrid, what we call a hybrid loan. 70% of 300 is 210. So a smaller percentage of a big number is more than a bigger percentage of a smaller number. Look at the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen. We now have a purchase and repair loan of $210,000. On the other side, we have a loan for 160,000. Do you see the drastic difference? Now you need 10 grand to do this deal. Conventionally, you need 60 grand to do this deal. Right. You have to get, this is the outside of the box thinking that you got to get used to. We're going to, we're not done, by the way. We're going to, we're going to work through the couple examples. So you guys can actually see each one of these. All right. Purchase price. This is a separate deal. Purchase price is $250,000. Let's just look these. Oh, by the way, when I'm talking about deals, these are deals that I have actually done or I'm looking at. There's a full disclosure yesterday. It's a full disclosure day. Purchase. When I'm talking about deals, these are deals that I have done or de deals that I'm currently looking at. Okay. Purchase price, $250,000. Repair cost of $300,000. I'm sorry, $30,000. Our value on this project when it's done is 390 because that's what the comps are telling us, okay? It's $390,000 house. This is something that I've actually done. Look at these again. Your purchase price is 250. Your repair cost are 30,000. Your finished value is 390,000. All right, let's walk it through the just like we did the first one. Walk it through conventional financing when we're getting 80%, okay? This is what Dan's talking about. Why it's such a big difference. Look at these numbers. Joe, Joe, amount. Joe. This is, is this called gatekeeping or is this called abundance? This is called Demore, abundance. Demore, this is, is this gatekeeping or abundance? <laughs> I, I just, I, I know people don't value what they get for free, but I mean, this is what we do. This is what we do. Uh, this is called abundance. We're breaking the deal damn down right now. Okay. Breaking like, it down. understand this is how it goes down. Real estate is not sexy. The result of it is. Bingo. Not sexy real estate's not sexy mowing the lawn's not sexy you know freaking working out's not sexy but the result of it all is sexy the work is not sexy but nothing works unless you work it okay so keep rocking absolutely look we'll do the same thing let's look at our, our conventional financing on the left side of the page two hundred fifty thousand dollars. remember that's our purchase price pp right there purchase price we're going to multiply that by 80 percent because that's the max we're going to be able to get their loan amount pretty simple it's two hundred thousand dollars we still need those fifty thousand dollars in repairs okay i'm sorry we need fifty thousand dollars towards the purchase price we also still need the thirty thousand dollars in repairs we need eighty thousand dollars we need to, the gap that we that we need to bridge here is $80,000 by using conventional financing. It's a little bit cheaper, right? Or we can go over to hard money. Let's go over to the right-hand side of the page and look at the same 390,000. That's the value. And we're only gonna take 65% of that. Forget 70%, let's take 65% of that. We're gonna do our loan, but it's gonna be a hybrid. It's gonna be mixed between the repairs and the purchase. Purchase plus repairs, 253,000. That's the number, 390, which is your value, times 65%. $253,000. Now, we've just reduced our needs to $26,500. This is the the uh, the gap we have to bridge. 26. Where do you want to be here, folks? Do you want to be on the left side where you need $80,000 more dollars or do you want to be on the right side where you need $26,000 more dollars? Yeah. Hard money will get you there. That's why I do it. We're not done. We're not done. Example number 1, okay? Example number one was that $300,000 value. We used two examples there, a 390 value and a 300 value after repair value. Example number one was the 300 value. Our sales cost to do this is $30,000. We estimate about 10% to sell a property. 
we don't sell properties. I encourage you to hold them forever because they have much more value. If you hold them because we can keep 9% of them as profit every single year. We've talked about that. We'll talk about it again. But for the purposes of this and thing we're looking at it saying, okay, it's going to cost us $30,000. Our initial net is 270 grand off of this property. So we, we, we bought it for 200. We put our $20,000 into it. We sell it for 30 for 300. The cost sales cost are 30,000. Our net is 270 grand. Okay. Let's walk this back through because this is where it also gets interesting. Example number one, and this is what, what's called fairness. This is where we show fairness. If we did that with conventional, you see, we, we're doing this conventional financing. If we had done it conventionally, and notice I put in parentheses, if they would have done it, which most likely they would not have because it needed repairs and a place that needed repairs is not going to get funded on the conventional side. But we want to say, if they would have done it, you now have that $270,000 that you've netted. Your financing costs are five grand. Your purchases, your purchase plus your cost, remember, was $220,000. You have net net. Your final net to you is $45,000 on this thing. $270,000, you got to pay back your $220,000. You got $5,000 in financing costs. Boom. You netted forty five dollars off the deal. Nice job. Nice job. I definitely encourage you not to sell this property, but <laughs> you got forty five dollars Move on. Example, the same example, number one, we did it with hard money. Want to notice in the parentheses, it says it got done because we showed you it'll get done. I don't care if you need, if you need repairs. We know that we, we put that into it. Now the financing costs are 10 grand. Now you still have your purchase and your cost. Your purchase was just 200 and your cost, which is 220. So you take that 10 grand in financing costs, the purchase plus the repair cost off and your net net is $40,000. Okay. Boom. That conventional side, we netted 45,000. On the private money side, we only netted 40,000. Okay, okay, let's remember that. That's, that's important. The example two was your 390. We would have did this one as well. Our sales costs are going to be about $35,000. Our net on this second property was 355, right? That's our net, 355. Let's walk through this one too. Same thing, left-hand side of the page. Conventional financing, if they did it, which they probably wouldn't because it needs repairs. You've got the 355. Your financing costs cost you $7,000. You have to repay your purchase price and your, and your rehab costs, which is 280. You netted $68,000 off this pro property. Okay. I'm using these examples, guys, because I've done this. These are deals that I've actually done. Actually, I didn't do it on the left-hand side. I did do it on the right-hand side. Hard money. It got done. The deal got done. $355,000 is our net. Our financing costs are 14 grand instead of seven. A little bit more expensive. Costs us an extra seven grand. We pay back our 280 that we borrowed to do the, the loan, uh, to the, do the purchase and the rehab. Our net net is 61,000. Let's look back across the page to the left side. The net net over here on conventional, again, is $68,000. Back over to the right side of the page, our net net money in our pocket is $61,000. This hard money is costing us money. It's costing us substantial money. Okay. Hard money loans are costing you thousands of extra dollars. Why would you do that? Okay. And you're saying right now, Joe, you just told me you do these. Yeah, I do these all the time. Every time I buy a property, I do a hard, hard money deal. Why? Conventional loans take too much time and they have too many conditions. They want you to give them everything under the sun. It just takes too long. You cannot move quickly and you need to move quickly when you find a good deal. Hard money considers ARV and they move quickly. You get a much bigger loan amounts. It's going to cost you a little bit more, but you get a much bigger loan amount. Okay, that's the, that's the real key here. You're getting a hell of a lot more money of a much much smaller uh, gap to bridge. We showed you, you don't need 70,000 or you need 20,000. It's a hell of a lot easier to get that private investor if you don't have the 20,000, which Dan's going to show you how to get that in a little while. But let's say you don't have it, you got to get that private investor, and it's a hell of a lot easier to do at 20,000 than it is at 70. Hard money considers the ARV and they move quickly. So why do you pay extra to get it? So you can move quickly and the deal gets done. Because if you don't get it done, it doesn't matter how much it costs you because it didn't cost you anything because you didn't make anything. Pay the money, move through the thing. Deal. Is time sensitive, you get hard money. You need to do less documentation on your personal side. You got bad credit, you know, not you don't have the best credit, you don't have income, all these things. You got to get hard money. Higher loan amounts, you get hard money. Less time equals more deals equals more money. I don't, I was about to say, I don't care what else you remember. That's not true, but I definitely need you to remember that one. Less time equals more deals 
equals more money. Folks, real estate investing is a numbers game. The more deals we look at, the more we can sort out and say, no, we don't want to do those. We want to take the 25% off the top that we do want to do, and we want to move through them. We pay a little bit more to get more. So just for an example, let's use any one of those deals where we, we paid $7,000. Let's use the one where we paid $5,000 more to get the hard money. We were making $40,000 off of that deal instead of 45. Now, if we did three of those deals in a year, how much are we making? $135,000. We do four deals a year at 40,000, which is less, we're making 160,000. Are you following me here? We do three deals conventionally. We're making more money per deal, but we're making less money per year because we've done more deals. That's what it's about, moving through these things. We just made $25,000 more just by using hard money. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. All right. Now that's 12 tools. We walked, we walked through tools. I could do this all day long with you. Okay. That's 12 tools to use right now. And when I say right now, that means right now, right now means today. There's no reason you guys can't go out and start employing these tactics today. There's absolutely no reason not to take action. There's none. I just showed you 12 of them. Go out and start learning them and putting them in. Hey, if you don't, there's no reason to do that. This says questions, but I'm not going to take questions right now. That's 12 tools to use for creative financing. Let's look at some creative finance deals. How to purchase millions in real estate with no money, no job, and horrible credit. Okay. You got, let's hey, guys, listen. I know this is a lot of information. I know he's monotone. I know this is a lot of numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> guys, if you have no money, you can do this. If you have no credit, you can do this. If you just got out the pen, successful convicts, you can do this. If you just cross the real grand baby, and you you can do this. All right. So listen up. You want to be a real estate investor, you got to put in the work. You got to spend time learning your craft, educating yourself in a community, even if it's not this community, even if it's not this community, some community. You are made for a community. If you are trying to get into the shark tank of real estate investing and you have no community and no neighborhood, you are going to get eaten alive. And I hope you do because lone wolf mentality will not be winning in this game at all. You are made for community. Put that in the chat. I am made for community. Make that declaration over your life. I am made for community. Religious, political, whatever the case is, you are made for community. You, can, you have to stop having the mentality of trying to find the shortcut of trying to get rich quick, you have to stop the microwave mentality and the fast food mentality. You got to let the crock pot simmer, baby. Okay, you got to let it smoke. Got to smoke the turkey for a little bit, you know, or you can go have your little microwave dinner, okay, and see how fast you catch cancer. The bottom line is it takes work, it takes time, it takes a skill set, but it can happen. Remember, this is theoretical unless you work it. Absolutely. Everything we tell you is theoretical unless you work it. Now, the difference is, is we're actually doing our part. We're doing our part, but you have to do your part. But we can't make you drink damn water, dude. We can lead you to the river, but there's just going to be some stupid dogs that don't eat drink and they just eat their own vomit. Okay, some of you guys are pigs. Some of you guys are dogs. You just never learn. Just keep going back to the same cycles in life, eating the same dog shit in life, eating the same food. You'll never learn because you're not willing to make the change in your life. And I'm not saying join my program. I'm saying you have to make a change in your life or you're going to keep doing the same stupid shit forever, being in the same dumbass place forever, wondering how everybody got. Well, I wish I'd have their personality. No, but dude, you have your personality, which is different than my personality, which somebody's attracted to you more than me. So stop with the excuse making and start fucking executing. I don't need your money. I just want to see you win. Do you understand that this is humanitarian for me? Let me just say this real quick. I need some, I need some real ears on me right now. Selling is humanitarian. When you sell or you offer a program that will change somebody's life, it is an absolute horrible travesty to not be able to invite somebody into what you know. I am gifted. I am privileged. I have an abundance of giftings. I have a great network. And if I just withhold that from you, when I can 
invite you in? I'm a gatekeeper. No, but you're selling. Yeah, I'm telling you to invest. I'm telling you to invest in you. Do you understand that I'm co-signing on Joe because he's served my community for the last year, helped a hippie from California get seven properties in three months. Now, what the fuck are you doing with no money? What are you doing? I don't, this is not your normal challenge. This is like, I really want to piss some people off. I really want to offend some people. And then I also really want to like challenge people and light that fire under people. The people that I light the fire under, that's what I want. But you got to light the fire and piss people off to get the forest burning. I don't need the, I don't need the tears. I want the wheat, baby. Sometimes they look the same. Sometimes they're together and you can't tell the difference. So I'm, I only want people in here that's going to have a fire lit under their ass to change the world. Entrepreneurs change the world. Entrepreneurs solve problems. Real estate investors solve problems. What problems are you solving? Do you know how to solve them? Why does all the wealthy do real estate? It's a hard asset, depreciation, appreciation. The tax write-offs are ridiculous. I don't care if you don't like real estate. I'm doing real estate now because I need some tax write-offs, man. Like, it's for real. So I just need you guys to understand that this is work. What he's about to tell you right now will work, but you have to work. And you have to put in the work and you have to learn it. But go ahead and give him the gems, man. I will indeed, sir. And he's right. That's it. it uh, you know, we, we touched on that earlier, but yeah, I mean, I've got better shit to do on a Thursday, uh, but we're, I'm here. Rad's here. We're here. I don't give a damn if you join a program or you pay one dime, but do something, do something, take some action and take something that you've learned from this three-day challenge and go make some freaking money. Change your life so that it's better. That's the best thing you can do for me. That is the absolute best thing you can do for me. And if you think I'm full of shit, I don't care because I'm old enough now. I'm 55 years old. I don't give a damn what you think. What I want is people to succeed and come back later and say, holy shit, you were right. That works. That's worth more to me than, than, than any dollar you could give me. Done. Flat out, period, in a sentence. And how to purchase millions in real estate with no money, no job, and horrible credit. All right. Let's talk about that. Let's talk because not, we're going to find available property worth 300000 ARV after repair value that you can buy for $200,000 but needs $20,000 in repairs. Does this sound familiar? Because if it doesn't, you haven't been paying attention, okay? We just talked about this damn property when we were talking about hard money. It's a property worth $300,000 when you're done fixing it and you've determined you can buy it for $200,000, but it's going to need $20,000 in repairs. We just went over, I, I use this a lot. I use this as one, it's a really popular thing. This is, this is a range that's really popular that I see throughout the United States. I see my students do it. I see the, the basically the same range being brought to me uh, time and time again. This is this is the, the wheelhouse, as they call it. This is the wheelhouse. A lot of properties will fit pretty close to these parameters right here. This is not unusual. Matter of fact, it's very, very commonplace. So you find the property, okay? We're going to go out and prep a one-page deck sheet. What is a deck sheet? It's a declaration sheet um, for lenders that includes. And we're gonna, because we want when we go to the hard money lenders, we want to be look like we know what the hell we're doing. Okay. Don't look like somebody don't know what they're doing. Do you want to give money to somebody that doesn't know what they're doing? I don't. Okay. So we prepare this deck sheet for the lenders. It's one page, concise, but precise. Ooh, write that one down, Dan. You can use that later. I like concise, it. Concise, but precise. Okay. Well, concise actually means precise. So I, I guess it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Short to the point, but includes price, the value. You're going to tell them what the price is. You're going to tell them what the value is. You're going to tell them where you got the damn values. Go see the comps we use. Here's the, here's the three properties we use as comparables to determine what the value are. Let them look at them if they want to. The repairs needed, the cost to do those repairs, not cost that you came up with. Tell them that ABC Plumbing and Mike's Electric and uh, Home Depot Flooring gave you these profits, gave, gave you these bids. That way they know they're real bids, okay? And show the profits. Simple. It's simple, but you put it on a one-page deck sheet. Right down there you go. There it is, okay? Everything's laid out. It's simple for the investors to understand. You now take that, you secure your hard money loan. We talked about this over on the hard money side. We do a $200,000 hybrid. We find the private investor. Notice I put in parentheses, me. Yes, by the way, I'm a private investor, guys. 
bring me these deals. I will do these. I will do these deals for you. Go find this deal. You need twenty thousand dollars to do it. Call me. I'll get. I'll get. I will do this deal. That's why I show it to you. I am a private investor. There's lots and lots of private investors out there. You break down the math. Okay, we have. Let's walk through it again. Our sales price, our finished value. Remember, is thirty three hundred thousand dollars. Our finance cost are five grand. Our hard money purchase. A lot gave us 200,000. Our private money repairs gave us 20,000. Remember, notice hard money purchase, that's our hard money loan. Private money is our private investor. They loaned us the 20 grand. The new pr private money profit. Private money, you see this 20 grand? It just, caught, I don't know why I'm pointing at my screen. You guys can't see me do that. <laughs> you see that private money? It just cost you six grand. That's expensive. Yeah, that's expensive. New loan. Now you've done this property. You've done this. Okay. You've got the $300,000 value. You've got to take all these things off. You got to take off your $5,000 in finance costs, your 200,000 you borrowed, your 20,000 you borrowed. You got to pay some greedy bastard private investor, six grand to participate, to get you over the hump. You now then go down and you take out a refinance loan for 240,000 against this property. This is an 80% loan, an 80% loan. You put it on there on the property. You pay off all these things that we just showed. So you have to pay that 5,000, the 200, the 20, and the six. This leaves you with $9,000 in cash, which is not a lot, right? You also have $60,000 in value because we're going to keep this place now. We're going to keep this property. We're not going to sell it. We're just going to refinance it. You just made $69,000. We're talking about 40s and 50s on the other side, 40s and 45s. Let's jump that up to 70. You know how you keep it by 70? By not selling it. By not selling it, not spending that $30,000 in, in sales costs. Keep it, borrow against it if you want to. Now you have $60,000 in, $60, in equity, 10 grand in your pocket. Now you have a $300,000 home that's appreciating at 5% per year. This is 112 year average. Don't use 2%. Don't use uh, two year averages. Don't use 10 year averages. That's all crap. Yes, we can beef up our numbers. We're only lying to ourselves. Yeah, sometimes they go up 20% a year. Sometimes they don't go up anything per year. Over 112 years, it's a 5% average. You have a tax deduction of 4% a year. Now, let's look at this again. You have a $300,000 home that's appreciating at 5% a year, and you have a tax deduction that's getting you 4% a year. It's 3.89, but close enough. By not selling the property, which allows us to make that thirty dollars to $40,000 more, we also are getting $27,000 a year not counting positive cash flow on a house that you have zero money in and nobody asks you for any money or your job history or your credit report or your income. Do you see what we we're saying there at the, at the beginning? How do you do this? How do you do this with none of these things? How do you make a million dollars with none of these things? I just showed you how to make the first part of it with no money, no credit, none of this crap. You don't need to qualify for shit to do this, okay? We just paid some greedy private investors six grand to loan us 20, and we're still making a shit ton of money. Rinse and repeat this three times for a million dollars in real estate that cost you zero. Did again. you follow uh, me on that one? Hey, no, I, dude, dude, I don't know. Put in the chat if, if, if you guys can follow this or not. Can you guys follow this or not? Are you guys following it? If you say no, say no. Say yes. Say no, yes. say no. And tell me what they say, Dan, because I can't see the chat. Yeah. I don't look at the chat. The when yes, following. Okay, 100%. Hell yeah. I'm getting it. I'm on it. Okay, cool. People Good. are following. Okay. Good. All right. I just want to make repeat. clear, guys, ladies and gentlemen, you're giving us your time. Your time is something we can never get back. We're bringing respect to you by not giving you any fluff and giving you all stuff. Amen? So we're giving you all stuff, no fluff, and we're making sure that you understand it. Now, we're doing our best. We only got so many hours on today. You know, I still got my slide deck. He's got his deck, right? We're giving you crazy. Dude, guys. When I get to my slide deck, it's going to blow your mind. Remember, you leave the room, you don't get back into the room. All right? Okay. You got to see Rat's slide deck. I, you got to. I, it, it's cool. Guys, you do the same thing. Rinse, repeat it three times for a million dollars in real estate to cost you zero. Zero. I just charged you to do the hard money. Yes, you're paying other people ridiculous amounts because you don't have any money. You don't have any credit. You don't have a job and you're an escaped convict. Okay. But you can do it. Rad's going to show you how to jumpstart that later on. All right, let's do the same thing. Let's do the same thing. Let's go, because today we're talking about creative financing. Let's do this, but these numbers will start resonating with you, okay? 
How about doing it a little bit differently and getting the same freaking results? This is creative financing. Let's be creative. Let's do it a different way. All right. Purchase price is still 200. Your repairs are still 20. Your finished value is still 300. Your hard money loan is still 200. Now you bring in credit cards or a personal loan to do those $20,000 in repairs. We don't go to the greedy investor like me. Okay. Now your finance costs are 5,000. You take the $240,000 on your new loan that we just got, same loan that we just got, except now the walkaway cash to you is $15,000. You just saved $6,000, but directly into your pocket. Same thing we did before. You still have, we said, well, let's, let's look at this. You still have the same result, except you have more cash. You still have $60,000 in equity. You're still making $27,000 a year on your, on your appreciation depreciation schedule. Three acquisitions per year gives you an annual profit of 261000 Whoa, where are we going with this? All right, hang on. I told you, we're going to move through this, folks. Same result. You got the same result that we did the first time, right? Except now you got a little creative. You wouldn't use some of Rad's credit theories and you didn't have to pay the greedy investor. You stuck that extra money in your pocket, did it yourself. You just put an extra 6000 in your pocket. You still have the same 60000 in equity. You're still making $27,000 a year off that one damn property. Three acquisitions per year gives you an annual return of profit of $261,000. Joe, where's that number coming from? Where the hell is that number coming from? I'll show you right now. There's no gatekeeping here, damn it. $60,000 in equity. You just made $60,000 in equity. You're doing three deals a year. That's $180,000. You're making $27,000 in your appreciation, depreciation schedules on each property. That's $81,000. That's $261,000, folks. Simply put, this doesn't get any simpler than this. You got, you want, you want the, the equity? Good. Go sell the damn properties. You can have it. You can go get it. I would personally keep it, but go get it. You do this every year. $261,000 a year. $261,000 a year. Do three simple freaking deals. Not complex, not hard, not, we're talking more, folks, we're talking about $20,000 in repairs. We ain't talking about shit. We're talking about replacing carpet. We're talking about doing paint, exterior, and interior. We're not talking about changing electrical and, and tearing off roofs and shit. We're talking about $20,000 in repairs. This is light, light remodeling stuff. This is stuff anybody can do. I don't care who you are or what your, what your physical capabilities are, or your mental capabilities. Or this I'm going to tell them what their mental capabilities are. If they can't implement my strategies, they're a freaking idiot. Oh, that's, I'm going to tell them about their intelligence. If, if if you see three deals, I want you to screenshot this right here. Everybody knows how to do that. Click like this, screenshot it, screenshot the slide. And when I get done with my presentation, I want you to pull up that screenshot and tell me if you can do this or not. Because if you can't, you're absolutely stupid. And somebody needs to tell you you're stupid if you can't do it. Because I'm going to show you where to go for the credit, how much to get for the credit, what data points are needed? I'm not gatekeeping. And then Joe's going to say, okay, this is the credit Dan just helped you get. Now we're going to get these deals done. But you got to stay on the call. And if you can't do it, you're an idiot. Yeah, the, numbers, idiot. the numbers, numbers don't lie. It's math, Numbers baby. don't lie. It's math. Let this offend you. Somebody say, I'm challenged and offended. Shout outs to you, fam. But it's good that you are. Because we don't grow unless we're challenged and offended. This should change. This today is going to change your life. Who is with me? If you let it. No, I need to know who's with me, Joe. Who is, who is it? Who am I talking to in the room? I can't see the chat, so I can't tell you. I, I'm looking. Somebody's saying I'm all in. <laughs> is it, are you going to let this change your life? Is today going to be the, if today's going to be a day, put today in the chat. And I'm not saying this to get you emotionally hot. Okay. I'm holding you accountable. Take so, this information and use it. You guys don't want to see me rip this thing apart. Go ahead. Take this information and use it. Folks, we just put out $261,000 a year to you. That's it, 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 it really doesn't get any simpler than this. Use the skill set I just taught you. I don't give a damn what you do after that. Use that skill set, these past three slides, four slides, whatever they are, and go do this. Okay? Go do this. You can do this. Let's use one more example. Let's use one more example. Okay. The purchase price. Whoa, this color slide. Like it just jumps out as she does it. <laughs> we got the same thing, folks. We can jump through most of this. It's the same $200,000. Repeating things until people get it. So I'm going to keep repeating it. Purchase price, $200,000. Repairs are $20,000. Our finished value is $300,000. 
Now, well, this is where we change it up a little bit. Getting creative. That's what we're doing here today is creative financing. Now we're going to borrow $170,000 on a hard money loan. Okay, just borrow the 170 instead of the 200. Now we're going to use one of our self-directed IRAs or 401ks. We haven't talked about those. Dan's going to. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I got something better than this shit, Joe. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I but there's so many ways. This, this shit right here, guys, is actually like not even the best. Because it's Joe, not- joined, guys, Joe joined my program for what, Joe? To learn more about business credit. That's it. This old man didn't know about it. Okay? Some of y'all know of more about don't. it, guys. Some of you guys, 90% don't, okay? Some of you ladies and gentlemen in here know business credit more than this old man. But this old man will dance circles around you in real estate investing millions of dollars over 30 years, okay? So I'm just telling you right now, this is his example. Wait till you see my example. <laughs> Go it's ahead. Raw. It's raw. It's raw. Rocket, man. You take your self-directed IRA one 401k, you loan yourself the 50 grand. If you don't have to do that and you have the IRA one 401k, talk to your broker and see if it's self-directed. You can loan yourself the money. Pay yourself back the profits. It's And guess what? Stacks free. Woo! <laughs> yeah, because you put it back in your IRA one 401k. Your finance costs are still running you 5,000 bucks. Your new loan's still 240 grand. You're still walking away with $15,000 in your pocket. Except now you made it even more money for your IRA and 401k and you got the deal done. We just mixed it up a little bit. This is creative financing. We borrowed the money, more money from ourselves. I could do this all day. There's still tons of equity. You're still making cash. You're still making the 27,000 in appreciation, depreciation. You do three a year for 261 grand. I mean, we can do this all day long. I can show you how to do 100% deals all damn day long. The question is, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? We're not going to take questions right now, but my purpose of the slide is you want me to show you nine more because we showed you 12. I showed well, you 12 We're going to do questions at the end. So if you questions stick around to the questions very the end, end, we will take your questions, okay? We will serve you. you this have, is a rhetorical. Here for, guys, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Let me say this again. I really hope this gets through. We are here to serve you. Are we trying to sell you? No. No. The program sells itself. We are not going to beg people. We do not want to babysit people, okay? We are not trying to sell you. We are trying to serve you. This is either for you or it's not. We're going to make our money regardless. We're actually doing you a favor and showing up for you. The way you're showing up for you, we're showing up for you too. That's called service-based selling. And some people need to learn how to do that. Instead of ask, 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 it's tell challenge show tell challenge show we're showing you the examples we're showing you the numbers we're giving you the how we're giving you the why we're giving you the where we're giving you the what we're giving you the how the how the how the how the how that nobody wants to let outside of the gate we're going to let it out of the gate we're not trying to sell you we're trying to change your life we get what we put in the universe, period. Joe and I, we got money. <laughs> we're, we're seven-figure earners, man. We don't need the money. We're going to get the money with or without you. We want you. We don't need you in the words of Joe. We want you. We don't need you. We're doing this. Guys, I'm in Medellin. I'm only in Medellin for two more days, and I head down to Lima, Peru, okay? I could be sipping on some Medellin you know, drink that they got down here off sugar cane. I love, I, you know, I like exotic fruits and stuff. And I like these little, you know, drinks down here in Latin America. You know, like I could be doing a lot, dude. I'm sitting on this, you know, couch, just trying to give you everything I got and pour into your soul that you can take things, whether you buy or you don't buy, because I love you. There's just a lot of people in this culture doesn't know what hard love and truth is because they're so used to cancel culture and sugar sugar-coated politics and sugar-coated theories and sugar-coated religions, there is still a yes and there is still a no. There is still a black and there is still a white. There is still a right and there's still a wrong and there's still a both. But the bottom line is you need to be told. You need to be told the truth. This is the truth. This is real real estate investing, guys. This is real creative finance. It's not just buzzwords. This is the real shit. This is the real shit.
And when I tell you the business credit game, some of you guys are going to be super offended that you've been pimped like a hoe. Listening to all these gurus that don't care about you. They just care about the views, the AdSense dollars, and the signups for the courses. I like all that stuff too. Don't get me wrong. But I put people before the profit and I put principles before the profit. I stopped 50 people from coming in here, even more than that. Would one out of 50 buy some more? Probably. But my integrity is not for sale. When I, my yes is my yes, my no is my no. You better be here on time. You better be in a stable internet connection so you don't get kicked out of the Zoom. I don't kick anybody out of the Zoom unless they're disrespectful. You guys know. There's 200 people in here. You guys know for tomorrow. Don't tell me the Zoom didn't, let, didn't, like, didn't work. You didn't work. Okay? We're on time? We show up on time. I'm going to keep this thing open an hour before the Zoom. With some music, you can do some work while the music is on. And while you're in the Zoom room, so you make sure you're in. Because tomorrow, we could have double the crowd. And the room could max out. Because I have 500 limit on the room. Believe me. The word's going to get around after this call. And with your help in the Facebook, we're going to tattoo that Facebook group, letting everybody know what they missed. Because they didn't show up. And people need to know that they missed out. So they don't miss out again. Consequences. Tough love. Let's keep rocking. And he's right. And then we're not going to be gatekeeping. When he says we're not going to be gatekeeping, we're going to give you, give you the hows. We're going to give you the how. We're going to give you the how. Folks, I just did. I just gave you several examples of how to make a shit ton of money for no, not one example that fits in a small box. And it's the only one thing that only applies to one thing. I showed you the most common example in the United States. I, that's why I chose it. That most common example in the United States, because you're going to find so many deals that are in and around that thing and exactly how you put them together on three different ways. Dan's got a whole bunch more ways to do it. And that's cool too. I'm showing you just now. I'm not going to do nine more examples. I'm not going to use the other nine uh, things that we did today because it would take too long. Well, I showed you 12 quick tools that you can use. I just applied three of them right quick. Boom, there they are. That's how you do them. That's how you apply these things. Why can't you do that? Back up. Let me rephrase. Why won't you do that? That's what there I mean. There you go, Joe. There you go. That's what the... Say it again, Joe. Say it again. <laughs> it's not a question of why don't you do this, okay? It's, it's why won't you do it? Why won't you do it? Because you can. So you can't throw don't in there. I can't use don't. I'm a semantics guy, grammar guy. I got. I had to. Re, I just had to retract that and say I can't say don't because I know that you can and you know that you can because I just showed you how to do it exactly how to do it with the most popular deal in the United States today. They're everywhere, and I gave you three perfect examples how to do it. And we're not done. We're not done, dude. You want to buy a million dollar home with zero dollars down? This is creative financing. All right, let's jump in it. You want to buy a million dollar home with zero money? Okay. People say, oh, bullshit, can't do that. Really? I've done it. Want to see how? Boop. Get list of properties. You go down to your county or you just pull it up on your computer, one of the two. I cannot get down, go down to your county. I can't get that out of my vocabulary. I've just been doing this too long. You get a list of properties from the county's public information that have an $800,000 loan on them that was placed between January of 2020 and July of 2022. Okay, I did this. These dates are off. Uh, for some reason, I apologize. Uh, between January 2020 and July of 2022. Okay, that's where we want. That's where we want to be. We skip trace the owner. Just so you know, this that 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 date range again is January 2020, July of 2022. We skip trace the owners. If you don't know how to do that, more than happy to teach you how to do it. Every every program out there to do that, and you have a VA virtual assistant calling. If you don't want to have a virtual assistant, you can do it yourself. You have somebody calling to see who is thinking about selling or moving or disposing of their property. This is a lot of numbers to go through. That's why we want to use a VA. Okay. We do this to identify a motivated seller and have them agree to a subject to sale. Why would they do this? Okay. Okay. Let's back up again. Let's talk about something. Why are we doing this, implementing this plan right here? If we have an $800,000 loan, that was placed in those timeframes, or whether it was placed in those timeframes or not, uh, we know that property is going to be worth a million dollars. 
because nobody's loaning eight hundred thousand dollars. This is too big for a VA loan. It's too big for FHA. It's it's they won't do these. So we're gonna, we're going to know that this is a million dollar home, okay? Because you had eight hundred thousand dollar loan on it. By the way, in California, these things fall up like trees. Three bedroom, two bath homes out here cost a million dollars. If you don't believe me, go look up the average price of a home in the Bay Area. We have several people in here that are from the Bay Area, I'm sure in California, and they can tell you in the chat, yeah, homes cost a million dollars. This is not a unicorn by any stretch of the imagination. We're looking for people who haven't been able to see any increase in value since they have bought because 14% of people are going to move every year or need to move. 14% of people will be selling their home if they could. This is the national average, okay? One out of seven, basically. One out of seven people will sell their property, try to sell their property, every year. So if 14% of these people out there are trying to sell, but they can't because they don't have any equity in their property, they have a little bit of equity, but it's all the money that they use as a down payment. Follow me on this one. These are motivated people. They are motivated and we're going to have them agree to a subject to sale. Remember we talked about subject to earlier? How are we going to get them out of this property? We're going to take their kick-ass loan and we're going to take it subject to. We're not done. We're not done. Not every seller will do this. Motivated sellers will do this. People don't try to create motivation. This is why we use a VA to do these things because we want to call through. Real estate investing is a numbers game. We go through the numbers, 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 numbers until you get two or three people that are interested and say, yeah, actually we've been thinking about selling, but we don't know how because we, we don't know how to get out, out from underneath this freaking uh, property without losing a shit ton of money. Bing, that's a warm lead. Now that's brought to you. That's somebody's interested in talking to you. You're going to go out and talk to these people. Don't waste time trying to create motivation. Cannot say that enough. Don't talk to every single person who's on the list that you find. But there's a lot of people that are not going to be interested in doing this. You want people who are interested. Somebody who needs to switch their job. They need to move. Their kid's gone off to school. They're getting divorced. I mean, all kinds of things could happen. It's why one out of seven people sell their home every year. Don't waste time create, trying to create motivation. Follow me here. Assuming the seller bought the property for $1 million, which is what we're doing, and they have an $800,000 mortgage at 3% for three years, because this is about right. This is about the number that would come in. It's going to be pretty damn close. It's going to be, nothing's perfect, nothing's exact, but it's pretty damn close. If you stay within that time frame, January 2020, July of 2022, values have not gone up. As a matter of fact, they've gone down, if anything. Yeah, I, get, I know you tell me you got microclimates and things are great right now in this area. Guess what? I can, I can counter that all day long. They're not. Nationwide, they're down. Okay. 97% of metropolitan areas have a decrease in listings. That's just the way it goes. The market is going down. You propose the following creative solution to them. This is the way you, this is what you do. You found a motivated seller now. You don't want to be talking to somebody. You don't beating on doors. You're not trying to talk somebody into doing something that they're not motivated to do. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You assume their existing financing and monthly P&I payments, okay? And that's your principal and interest payments of $3,372. It's a big mortgage, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a monster. Not in California. You can't even rent a place for $3,500. Think I'm kidding? Talk to somebody in the chat about living in California. The seller is going to carry a second mortgage for $200,000. Because remember, you're, you're taking their $800,000 loan. They're going to carry a second mortgage with no payments on it. No payments are going to be due for two years. Okay, now the seller doesn't get paid for two years, but they just saved $100,000 because they didn't have to sell that home. Remember, we have to apply about 10% in, in sales prices and commissions and fees and all this crap. Million dollar home is going to be about $100,000. They That's $100,000 if they sell that property is their money. That's the $200,000 they just put down within the past two years, okay? People are motivated to save $100,000. They're not going to get it for two years, but they're going to get it. This motivates people. By the way, yes, I did this deal. You Airbnb, travel nurse, or short-term rent the property for $4,850 per month. This is what this particular property came out to be. Should have been a little bit higher, in my, in my opinion. It's $4,850 per month. Okay, great. You've, you've done your research. You went and looked up Airbnb. You've seen occupancy rates in the area. You know what the average payment is. You, do, you don't guess at these numbers. You get these numbers. They're available to you. You don't have to go out and, and recreate the wheel. They have supply this shit for you. It's free. You figure it out. Now, you have $0 in this property. It's easily right, refinanceable in two years. 
DSCR works. If you weren't here yesterday, a DSCR is a debt service coverage ratio loan that will allow you to cover 100% financing. Yes, blah, 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 off of the debt service. You saw the debt service on the earlier screen. The debt service coverage ratio will clearly cover this mortgage and then some. You're making $90,000 a year in schedules, losses, and gains. You're making 90 grand a year before you profit from those rents. Okay. This person obviously did this. Let's back up. They moved. This was actually, this was a divorce situation and to, to, they had to move and they were getting out of town and they couldn't, they couldn't sell the property. The court ordered the property sold, blah, 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 blah. We walk in. That's a, that's a big nut to cover. It doesn't matter. We talk about percentages here, folks. We talk about percentages and ratios, not dollars. That $3,300 a month for almost $3,400 a month payment should scare the hell out of you if you're paying currently 800, but it doesn't matter because we've got our numbers right down here. We see that we're going to be turning $4,850 a month. Do we really care if we're paying $3,300 a month out? No, we don't. The seller eats it up because they love it because they're not going to lose a hundred grand. They just found a way to not lose a hundred thousand dollars in a situation where this particular situation was a divorce and everybody wants their money and nobody wants to pay. Neither side wanted to pay $50,000 to sell a house, but it doesn't matter what the motivation is. It matters that they had a motivation. We identified the motivation up front and we were able to propose this deal to them. This is why you have VA call all these different people. Now we've got zero into this property. We're going to be, we, we got to come up with that 200 grand in two years, right? But we, we now show that we're debt servicing it for two years. You're, it's easily re refinanceable. You're making $90,000 a year on your scheduled losses and gains before you take a dime and profit from the rents. You're making $90,000 a year. Okay, I'm going to back this up. I'm making $90,000 a year off of this freaking house. I've got nothing into it. Boom. There's the and first million in your portfolio. You create money out of debt, ladies and gentlemen. And you say, this, well, I, we when do. I get all this credit, I hear people say, I got all this credit, but how do I make money? This. <laughs> this. 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 <laughs> okay. This. I have all this credit. How do I leverage it? How do I deploy it? You know what you need to stop doing, Toro? <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need to stop this Toro shit, man. This is, this is weak shit. This is micro machines, man. Leave that for somebody else and get a real... Guys, stop with the hobbies, okay? I like Amazon. Shimori will tell you the only way to do uh, uh, e-com is not Amazon. Amazon is just a nice tool, but e-com is so vast. Create a sustainable business. Real estate investing is a sustainable business. This is how you leverage the bank's money, the hard money lending, all of this stuff. You're not touching this money, are you? No, the digits are being wired to you, right? Or wired to somebody else. You're not coming in with a bucket loads of cash or the IRS and every freaking national security be on your ass. So just, just, just miss me with these little influencers with their, you know, their grills in their mouth, with their, their pockets full of cash and stuff like that. Skip me with that shit. Okay. That's some bullshit. Grow the hell up. Right. Stop, stop with this fake flaunt shit. Stupid. Okay. Let's grow up and be men. Let's grow up and be women. And, and really, really take financial literacy to the next level. Serious. Protect our credit, leverage our credit and build assets that can create generational wealth. And this is how you do it. The next section of this training, once he's done, I'm going to show you personal. If you don't have any business, that's okay. If you have, and then I'm gonna show you the business side. I'm gonna to speak to the rookies and I'm gonna to speak to the vets. I'm not gonna speak down to you. You're gonna to have to come up to me. That's leadership. I'm not gonna spoon feed you, okay? I'm not sucking on the, on the cow tit. You're going to come to me, you're going to come to Joe, and you're going to grow the hell up, and we're going to get rich. That's what we're going to do. Keep going. Before I turn things over to Rad to go crazy on you, I'm going to give you a teaser going into this because I love this one. <laughs> I love it. It's how Using 0% down, guys. Yeah. How to create your own bank. You want to create your own bank? I'm going to show you right quick how to do it. No, I haven't even seen this part of your slide deck. Using 0% down real estate. How do you create your own bank? You want to create your own bank? Boom. I'll show you right quick. No problem. How much funding do you need? All right. Let's, for properties, that's kind of like porpoises, the properties. 
let's accumulate 10 properties. This is what we always talk about in my program. Let's go out and accumulate 10 properties using the zero dollar down methods that you just learned. I just showed you how to do it, okay? I just showed you the perfect example, the most common example in the United States. They're all over the freaking place. Go out there and collect 10 of these things, okay? 200, 10 of these properties will average median, median price in the US right now is between 330 and 340, 330, 340. So your portfolio, the asset that you gain, forget the rents, forget the positive cash flow, forget all that crap. You now have a portfolio asset, which is the $3 million portfolio that we continue to talk about in here. We get the $3 million portfolio and we're generating $250,000 a year annually. Uh, that's the same thing per year annually in gains and losses. This is super freaking important. Okay. Let's back Let's take this a little bit slower. Let's accumulate 10 properties. You think that's a lot? No, it's not. No, it's not. I just showed you how to do it hundred percent. Not you need your money. You just need to go out and freaking do it. Go out, get 10 of these things. Your portfolio is now $3 million. You're generating $250,000 a year annually in gains and losses. And why is this so important? Okay. Because folks, when you do this, you've now created an asset. This portfolio asset is in US real estate. Super important because it becomes, it becomes financeable. It becomes marketable. It becomes, you can weaponize this. As, as a, you can weaponize this debt. Let me show you how to do it. You have now entered a completely new financial reality. This is absolutely true. I hope you, you're listening to this. And I hope you believe it. The rules change for people with multi-million dollar real estate portfolios. They just do. Yep. They yep. do. Yeah, yep. absolutely. When you walk into the bank and you've got a $3 million freaking out uh, portfolio, you are treated very, very differently because they know you are very, very different. They know you're making $250,000 a year. You don't have to explain this shit to them. Okay. This is the difference. They already know it. You just have to show them that you've got Guys, it. Guys, the bank is made for the sheep, not for the goats. Absolutely. Absolutely. The goats can go in there and just say, give me 10 mil. Go walk in there and say, give me Somebody's going to give them 10 mil. Yep. They're not going to ask for, you know, you know they're not going to ask for all these statements and all this stuff like it's toilet paper. You understand the difference? You have assets that you get. Joe, tomorrow we're talking multifamily cash flowing properties and how to leverage your assets to get freaking rich in real estate. And I'm giving all the plays on how to leverage your life insurance policy, how to leverage your HELOCs, how to leverage your non-owner occupied HELOCs, which are freaking gemish because there's not many left in the game. No, there's not. Securities line of credit. You're talking about self-directed IRA. I'm like, dude, take that IRA to this credit union and get a mill off of it. I don't know if you guys really want this though. You just want you just want the Pace Morbies, right? Just want the Grand Cardones. Want, just want the fluff. I love Grand Cardone, by the way. I'm a Grand Cardone guy. You know, not really I'm big. A I'm not a I'm not a Pace Morby kind of guy. But bottom line is, is I, uh, dude, if you want the real, then come get it and be early tomorrow. I, I just hey, I, be, I want to implant, guys. We'll I want to yeah, being real. Let's be real. I want to, I really, guys, is you got to have your priorities straight. You got to have your principles. This may sound like fluff to you, but this is what you do day in and day out of the battle to win the war. When I wake up in the morning, I work 14 hours a day, every single fucking day. Just because I don't post on YouTube doesn't mean I'm not building out back ends of my systems and my business and serving people. Dude, I'm a, I'm a grinder. I don't have time for the, I don't, I don't have time for what people say about me. All I have is my tunnel vision on. And, and when you're making love to your dream, you got nothing else to, to look at. You don't have anything else to worry about. Yeah, they're going to talk about you. They're going to say all types of stuff. They said it about the best. Say it about Muhammad. Say it about, you know, Martin Luther King. Say it about Trump. Say it about Obama. Say it about whoever you pick your name, Jesus. People are going to talk shit about you. What are you going to do? Get down to their level? Or are you going to make them come to you? Just do you. Be radical. Be you. Be real. And put in the work. Do the work. And put work. in the work. Do the work. Because folks, we just accumulated a $3 million portfolio. A $3 million portfolio, you now are in a different realm. It just, I can't explain it to you enough. You have, you, you, you've entered, you, you're now, you don't have to follow the freaking rules that everybody else follows. I don't care if it's fair or if it's unfair. That's not the point. I'm giving you the black and white. This is reality. The reality is people with large portfolios don't have to do all the crap other people have to do. Because it's self-explanatory, because the rich recognize the rich. The rich recognize the banks, recognize people who know how to make money. They know that if you have a $3 million portfolio, you know what the hell you're doing. 
That's the way it goes. That's who they want. That's who they want walking through the door. Look, you got a $3 million freaking portfolio. This portfolio placed correctly has a cash value of a minimum of 2X on your annual revenues. Let's talk about that for a second so you know what I'm, I'm saying. And by the way, if there's any economist in the group out there, anybody that does uh, financial advising and stuff like that, they can tell you. Uh, and I'm sure we're way out of uh, 100 and however many people are in here, I don't even know. This portfolio placed correctly. Any business has a value to it. And it's how many X's. Okay, on an annual basis, you're generating this much value. It's worth how many X's? That means how many times? Generally, the rule of thumb is three and a half, 3.5. So in other words, you go out and buy a business that's generating $100,000 a year. That business is going to cost you $350,000. Just, you know, generally, that's, that's about what it is because you're going to get your money back in three and a half years. That's the idea. Uh, but we're going to go very, very conservative here. Very, very conservative. I'm going to say, okay, this portfolio placed correctly has a cash value of a minimum of 2X on the annual revenues, okay? So you can walk out and get a line of credit against your existing freaking portfolio, okay? 500 grand on a conservative estimate. Folks, this is a very, very conservative estimate. I, I, I hope there's some economists in the group out there that are chatting. I saw one or two in here earlier that I know that they, that's what they do. And they can back this up. This is a very, very conservative estimate. You put together a $3 million, $300 million, $3 million portfolio, you immediately have access to a five hundred thousand dollars on a very conservative estimate. You can sell it for the five hundred thousand dollars. I wouldn't do that. I'd get a line of credit against it and continue to do it because how much freaking damage can you do with five hundred thousand dollars when I just showed you how to get here by spending zero? Zero. We just spent zero, and it's not complicated. And now. I'm going to dump another 500,000 into your effort. Holy crap. Think about it for a second. I don't even want the answers. I don't want you to put it in the chat. I want you to think about it for a second. And just eat it up. Just, just imagine if we went from zero to 500,000 with zero money, where are you going to take 500,000? Yeah, I tell you what, it's scary when you think about it now, but it's super cool. So you need to it's scary. It is. It's hard to comprehend. But as you can see, because I've showed you, it is very real and completely doable. Anybody in here can do this. You can do it with what I've given you. There's no gatekeeping. You are entering a financial stratosphere that few ever, ever experience. I use the, the hallways. I talk about corridors. People, you are now walking down the corridors that very, very few people ever travel. And that what pisses me off about it is that it's available to everybody. Everybody can actually freaking do this. You don't need any damn money. You don't need credit. You don't need a job. You don't need anything. You need to go to work and do it. But I've showed you how to do it. So just go do it. You don't have to go figure it out. Just get up and go freaking do it. You know, Joe, I really wish that, I wish that Columbia, where I'm at right now, had the U.S. banking system. Because there are so many people that work three jobs because their currency sucks, because their government's corrupted. Amazing, beautiful people here in Colombia. Amazing, beautiful people in Peru. The world is full of beautiful people. America is just a small part of the pie. Don't get it. Don't, guys, don't get it twisted. There's people in other countries better than you. We're just in America, but we have the opportunity that no other country has at the moment. And people aren't talking about it and people are getting too damn lazy. You don't realize the freedoms you still have and you don't realize the opportunity you still have. And you better, you better act now before it's too late. You're not gonna have much more time left. Every cycle has a cycle. 2008 had a cycle some major wealth transfer was happening in 08, 09, 2010. We're about to see 2008 10X. We talked about that numerous times in the mentorship program. Joe is helping students how to get out of certain situations and how to get into different situations. All right, get ready. Dan, I'm going to let you folks strap on your freaking belt. I saw part of this earlier. This is this is powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. Get ready, Dan. Hey guys, I turn it over to you, my friend. Go blow, those. go blow their minds. I'm going to show you how to get over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in personal credit. 
And then I'm going to show you how to get almost double that in business credit. I don't care if you don't have business credit. I don't care if you have bad credit. There's always a solution. It's what you're willing to invest in. Let's go. Attention and warning. You must protect your personal credit at all costs. If you max it out, your credit will fall by like 200 points. So the goal is not, ladies and gentlemen, the goal is not to use personal credit for real estate. I'll say that again. The goal is not to use personal credit for real estate. If you do use personal credit for real estate, it is cheaper than hard money. And it also is a temporary solution, but do not get addicted to the temporary solutions. Credit is like relationships. You have to date banks before you marry them. Ladies, if a dude wants to just freaking go crazy with you and they just met you, the dude is a wacko, okay? Don't be a wacko to the banks. Credit is like relationships. You date them before you marry them. If you max it out, you're going to drain the system for you. So personal credit needs to be protected at all costs. You cannot afford to get into risky investments with your personal credit. You cannot afford to be leveraging your personal credit for your favorite guru that wants to sell you a $10,000 course and then upsell you to a $20,000 program that gives you gator funding or whatever else they give you, okay? You cannot afford that bullshit. If you're gonna leverage your personal credit, you better know what the hell you're getting into, what your exit strategy is. I'm giving you this disclaimer because I'm gonna help you get $250,000 in personal credit. But I need you to understand that personal credit is really to help you get into the properties, to exit the properties, to get into business credit and to leverage business credit, okay? Can we be agreed there? That I'm not telling you to always and forever, ever use your personal credit. That is not what it's intended for. Banks know that that is not what it's intended for, okay? Business credit is what you want to work towards, but you need your personal credit solid first. And I'm gonna show you why. Your, 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 your credit is the foundation of everything you fucking do in business. Don't screw it up. Don't apply for bad shit. Don't believe your favorite gurus on YouTube. Okay, it is your foundation. Until you're making two to $5 million and your EIN has credit built out on it, your EIN cannot establish business credit on its own. Have fun with Divi and have fun with your favorite guru that wants to get a bunch of affiliate income off your ass and pimp your ass for 10 to 25% for Divi, Capital on Tap. What's the other one? Uh, clear Card, all of this bullshit. And all the gurus telling you to build corporate credit with courses for 997. I know a bunch of them, I'm just holding my tongue right now. It's fake. It doesn't work. And the reason why people don't build business credit is they're absolutely confused because they have mixed messaging all over the place. We're going to leverage our personal credit to build business credit. We're going to do extremely fast and extremely efficient. So you need your personal credit fixed. Always have a plan so you don't get caught in utilization hell. The hardest thing to get out of is late payments on your personal credit and utilization hell. Dan, I'm stuck in utilization hell. Sorry. Watch my videos. Join my program. Be creative. Be credit is behavior. I'll say it again. Credit is behavior. You cannot fix somebody's credit. You cannot fix somebody's behavior. Everything in credit is behavioral. Okay? Let's get that together. Credit needs to be protected at all costs. Only, only, only use your credit for investments. Do not use them on Jordans. Do not use them on your stupid watch. Do not fuck your Lamborghini and Mercedes, drive a Pinto or drive a motorized scooter and live in a third world country and build your portfolio, live below your means and use your credit like a debit card and leverage credit APR rates. That's what they won't tell you because they want you to sign up with their credit cards because they get paid $300, $400 for everyone you get approved for. Here, here's heaven. Here's heaven. Use my link. Here, let me fund you. Hey, let me repair your credit. And they're trying to pimp and whore out everything that they can. I am the credit profit. Let's go. Relationship banking is key. You have to date before you marry. When I go over the no doc, low doc programs, some of these are going to be contingent on your banking relationship with them. Okay. It will take you where other strategies will not. Relationships in life 
in business, in banking, will take you relationships, or take you places where relationships, anything else cannot take you. Relationships is the key. Relationship capital. That's why I play the long game. That's why I don't screw people. I don't, I play the long game. I'm not a novice. I'm not a rookie. I play the long game. Your credit score is your reputation. Your credit profile is your resume. There's two different. I'm not going to break down the scoring model. You can go to my YouTube channel and find that and, go, and YouTube it and watch all of your favorite gurus talk about it. I'm not here to talk about how your credit works. I'm here to talk about how to get the funding. I'm here to give you the stuff and not the fluff. Because if you don't know that, you got to go back to preschool and figure out how your credit score works. And you really need this program that we have. Okay, because we we that's we have to show people that because people have never been taught that they don't know what they don't know. Okay, you need to build out both your reputation and your resume need to be built out both. Always know your data points, and like real estate investing, have a damn plan. Do not be careless with your personal credit, and every time you purchase something with that Amex, with that Navy Federal card, is this making me money? Or is, or is this costing me money? Even if it's a tax write-off, some of you guys need to be more disciplined. Your behavior needs to be disciplined, like for real. It's out of control. Your credit's behavioral, your spending's behavioral. Get it together. I'm not a Dave Ramsey guy, believe me. But dude, I'll be on, I, I guess I'll have to join Dave Ramsey's barbecue if you're buying dumb shit with your credit card because that's not what it's intended for. You treat your credit card like your debit card. 0% all the time. And until you're making money, then you start travel hacking. Like my boy Renee says, shout out to Credit Gems. Your number one goal for credit cards should be 0% APR and never a travel hacking card, never a points back card. You, you, don't, you don't deserve it. Until you've made money and have a business, you don't deserve those luxuries. You need to build a business because if you build a business, it will serve you for generations. Strategy number one, no doc personal loans. There is a place for personal loans when you're getting into real estate, okay? Let's talk about it though. Have a plan for the loan. Never get into an installment debt loan without an exit strategy. So if you get into this loan, you better be able to give me your three month, six month, nine month, and 12 month exit strategy with this loan. Do not apply for a loan unless you have an exit strategy. That is called financial literacy. That is called responsibility. We leverage credit responsibly and we leverage credit aggressively. Responsible and aggressive can go together like a marriage but you got to have a plan for the marriage. You got to be on the same page for the marriage or it's not going to work out. Some of y'all know that. Know your data points at all time. Read Facebook groups, go into Reddit, go into forums, watch YouTube videos, double check their ass. Sometimes they just put fluff out there to get views. You know what I'm talking about. Tons. It's just like, dude, everybody's trying to be an online YouTuber on finance because it makes money. But like all they do is, is take a Facebook uh, post and they make a video about it and they don't fact check anything. <laughs> you're, 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 man, you're following, you're, 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 hey, listen, you're following some crazy people, man. I, 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 would, I would check my circle for real. Do not ask for no doc programs. Hey, do you have a no doc program? I heard you had no doc program. I heard Radical Marketer Facebook group, I can get no doc program. What the hell are you doing, man? You're gonna raise red flags. Nobody's gonna work with you. What you say things is like, hey, listen, I'm thinking about getting a loan with you guys. What do you require? I like to have my ducks in order so that way I can come presentable and get the highest offer. How many pay stubs do you need from me? What type of credit score is required? You know where they pull from because I, I really am responsible for my credit and I don't want it being ran all over the place. Bankers respect that. Dance with them. Do you know how to salsa? Learn how to salsa. Learn how to merengue a little bit. Do some footwork. I don't overanalyze. I just do what works. I take the leap of faith. Some of you guys need to learn how to step out on the boat. You've been waiting to step out, step out, step out. Listen, I'm gonna say this right now. Write this down. Faith is the breeding ground for your miracle. If you don't believe it, it'll never work for you. And you can't work it unless you believe it. So if you don't believe real estate investing will work for you, it won't work for you. And this program won't work for you. If you believe real estate investing will work for you, Okay, good. Now find a program. Now find a coach. Now find a mentor. Now find a community and invest in yourself. This one or some other one. I don't care. Bottom line is you're made for a relationship and you need guidance in this so you don't wreck yourself. Don't be a freaking moron. I'm saying this in love because I, I mean, dude, I may never talk to you in person, but I would hate to have any information that I say screw up your life. 
I don't want to overhype anything. I don't want to romanticize anything. I want to tell you the real. I want to be real with you because you deserve to have somebody be real to you. I've created the Radical Market of Mentorship Program because I wanted a program that I didn't have for myself. And I almost say that with teary eyes in my eyes. I've been scammed. I've been led astray. I've been taken advantage of left and right. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars hoping things were right. I've only joined one program that actually changed my life. Shout outs to Vanessa Lau. Okay, I paid $20,000 to be in that mentorship program. Changed my life. But I was scared to death when I gave $20,000. That's $20,000. And it wasn't for one time. It was for one year. But I'll tell you this. When I made that investment last October, I can't even tell you. I work with her team now. I'm really good friends with her now. Some of you guys don't know Vanessa Lau, YouTuber. You'll figure her out real quick. Almost a million followers on YouTube. We're friends. I have her network. I have her team working for me. Uh, dude, like when she comes back out of her hiatus, we'll be creating content together. I, I built solid relationships with seven figure earners. You don't know what you don't know. But when you get in the room with giant killers, you become a giant killer. When you get in a room with millionaires, you start thinking like a millionaire. You got a poverty mindset, spend $5,000. You learn how to break it quick. All right. I'm not scared of the offer. Are you scared of the offer? Because I'm going to show you how to get the offer money right now if you don't have it. And if you have it, then use your card and then go get one of these cards and do a balance transfer and pay it off in 21 months. Sounds like a good deal, right? Only apply for credit at one time and then go in the garden and then go in the harvest. We have our harvest time. We have our garden time. Our harvest time is where we apply for all of the credit at one time. Say, I will not apply for credit unless it's at one time. Put that in the chat. I will only do it at one time. Why? Because every inquiry matters to you on the personal side. Everyone matters to you on the personal side. We will do our funding rounds in six month increments. Every six months, we will go for funding. One round every six months. You get two harvest seasons every six months. You got a six, you know, every six months. Okay? That's how we're going to do it. The first person alone, you can get up to $50,000. This is from the PenFed website. Don't believe me, go fact check me. Loans up to $50,000. That's a five-year loan. It's not the greatest interest rate, but hey, listen, it's cheaper than hard money. Okay, no origination fee, no hidden fees. You don't have to be military to get into PenFed, ladies and gentlemen. You can walk in the door, get this $50,000 piece of cake, 680 credit score or higher. Now, if you get into this, all right, uh, this is going to pull from Experian, just so you know. Um, this hard pull, the, the thing, the thing is with this right here, you can actually check your rate before they actually hard pull you. So it's a soft pull pre-qualification and it's very accurate. So you can soft pull yourself, see where you're at before you move forward with them. You can actually do this before you join them, uh, if you want to as well. Okay. Unless they've changed that recently, but that's 50 K right there. Personal loan, no docs required. Now there are some situations where documents are required. If you have a lower credit score. If you have anything negative on your credit report, if there's anything internally that they see that they don't like, they can ask for them. But I have many mentees that have had this, 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 this loan with no docs required. Okay? So just so you know. Well, they asked me for docs. Well, sorry, Chuck. You know, not your good luck. Give them the docs. Okay? There's also ways as a business owner to provide documents for yourself legally. We talk about that in the program as well, but we're not talking about that right now. The Navy Federal Personal Loan. I'll talk about that, okay? $50,000, as you can see. This is, I'm not fluffing, dude. It's right here, okay? $50,000. This is just from the website. Their APR is kind of high, right? But remember, what's your plan for the loan? Hard money's high. What's your opportunity cost? It's all about the opportunity cost. If you wrap in your opportunity cost and you're still profiting from the deal and the numbers still work, it's a good deal. Joe will tell you that himself. So $50,000 personal loan, no docs required. You get funded in five minutes. I said five minutos, okay? Cinco minutos, all right? Five minutes, right to your account. You apply, you sign a promissory note, so then you're checking account five minutes. I've done it, so I know. It's a transunion hard pull, 680 credit score or higher, but actually this can actually go lower if you have a relationship with them. We have somebody with a 500 credit score that got approved for a $25,000 credit card with Navy Federal. They can take 30% off of that 
which is, I don't know, $7,500 and go buy a property right now. Eli's probably in the chat. All right. This is a massive, massive deal, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I don't have military. Okay. We talk about that in the program, how to get into Navy Federal without being military. There's a lot of different hacks. And we talk about the safe ones so you don't get your account shut down or audited. All right. So just know that that's in the program. All right. There's also a home improvement loan. Okay. A lot of people don't talk about this because they don't know about this. They just copy credit plug and my information. All right. Shout out to the plug. Love the guy. Anton, you're amazing. All right. So the Navy Federal Home Improvement Loan will work really well for people that have a property. Now, if you don't have a property, it won't work for you. Okay. I've had a couple people tell me it did, but I, I, I'm skeptical, dude. I'm skeptical Hughes over here. If you don't have any real estate, then just go do the personal. Don't do these stupid things that you hear about in these RPX groups about turning an auto loan into a personal loan. It's bank fraud. It's not good. Basically, the play is don't turn in the don't 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 turn in the paperwork for the car, and then they'll turn it into a personal loan. Just apply for the damn personal loan and stop trying to defraud the bank. Okay, we don't talk about anything that's unethical. We leverage the legal system. We leverage the credit system to its full capacity. And I came out of RPX, so I know. There's a lot of shit I don't like about it, okay? There's some good stuff, taught me some stuff, good people in there. Also, a lot of frauds in there, okay? But with that being said, don't do the auto loan to personal loan hack. It's absolute bullshit and it'll get you in big trouble and you don't want that. If you, if you don't have a property, apply for the personal loan. If you do have a property, apply for the home improvement loan. Why? It says no collateral is required. That means it's an unsecured loan, people. Notice this here. Sorry, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited, okay? You can apply online for the personal loan. But the home improvement loan, you can't apply online. You have to call in or go into the branch. Now, my boy, Shimori, is Shimori still on the call, Joe? I believe so. Look in the chat. Is Shimori still on the call? Shimori, you still on the call? Yeah, he's here. Is Shimori okay. still here? Shimori got a $100,000 pledge loan for... Uh, what was it? Uh, 180 months. Okay. They don't talk about that on YouTube. All right. But he did. 180 months because he was going to use the pledge loan for home improvement purposes. But the bottom line is you can get this loan, $50,000 out of 180 months, Joe. Is that a cheaper payment than 50000 at 60 months? I believe so. Bit, like by three times cheaper, right? Just about, yeah. So if they can get this with no docs required and they can get this, you know, by over the phone or going into a branch and they can use this for improving their rental property or they can use this for improving their property that you taught them how to get. Do you think that that would be valuable, Joe? A $50,000 unsecured loan that they can get with no docs by just Extremely having a relationship? Valuable. Okay. Okay. You're working with funding companies and they don't even know how to do this kind of stuff. All right, next thing, $40,000 loan from American Express, but you have to be one of their customers. Again, in all fairness, you have to be a customer of Navy Federal. You have to be a customer of Navy Federal. You don't have to be a customer of PenFed. No military requirement here, military requirement here, or affiliation, or family and re roommate, that roommate hat, okay? American Express, 40000 Again, check your offer, soft pull. Oh, this is beautiful. I can see ahead of time if I'm going to be approved or not. And if I am, you don't have to give documentations for American Express because you're already a customer. They already see you're spending behavior. It's all about behavior, guys. It's going to get more and more about behavior as AI comes into banking, but you don't know about that either. Okay? $40,000 funded, okay? I think the, the I, don't, I forget how long the term is on this one. You guys can go look for yourself. But $40,000 experience, 720 plus score, you got to be a client of American Express. Right there, Joe, I taught them how to get $40,000 with American Express. That's an Experian. Navy Federal is going to be TransUnion. Penn Fed uh, will be an Experian hard pull. Their credit cards are Equifax. It's a little bit different. They used to have a personal, a personal line of credit, but the personal line of credit went away with Penn Fed. The economy is changing, guys. I don't know if you noticed, but we're in a recession. I call it a depression. So a lot of the stuff's going to go away. But I want you to know we have a lot more no-doc personal loans that we have in the program. Next month, we're doing 10 funding calls. I'd be in the room if I were you. 
mentees, get excited. It's going to be 4th of July, 10X. Strategy for a personal line of credit. So we have our personal loan, which you apply for one time and you get a lump sum of money. And then you pay every single month an amortized interest rate. That's why we don't like these because you got to apply for them every time you want them. The personal line of credit is you apply one time and you have like a nest egg for a rainy day that you can tap into whenever you want, aka capital on tap without being a dumb credit card. 50,000, 100,000. Let's look into it. Here's what you need to know. Helix, personal lines of credit are amazing for liquid capital. When you need to be a cash buyer, you go into your 0% business cards or you go into your personal line of credit or you use your nest egg from your loan that you got from the last three that I showed you that had no docs required, okay? You use these personal lines of credit for liquid capital, but be careful again, be careful. The difference between a personal line of credit and a personal loan is a personal line of credit is revolving, right? So it reports every month utilization, amortized loan is different goes off a of dti you're not going to go there deep bottom line is is you can use the loan your score is not going to plummet this right here your score is going to plummet if you max it out and don't pay it off before its reporting date okay it will kill your scores there's no difference of maxing out a personal line of credit or maxing out a credit card let me ask you a question if you have a deal that can nail you $50,000 in profit after repair costs in 90 days, would you max out your credit card for 90 days to get $50,000 in profit? Put yes or no in the chat. Joe, tell me what people are saying. I can't see the chat. Looks like a huh? resounding yes to me. So you're willing to, to tank your score for $50,000? Not financial advice, entertainment purposes only. Don't believe anything I say. I'm a liar. Okay. That's my disclaimer right there. Don't believe anything I say. Okay. I'm an absolute moron. Don't believe me. Okay. I would 1000% max out every single one of my fucking credit cards to get a property that's going to net me $50,000 to $100,000. Absolutely, because the credit's fake. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to somebody else. And now you get to give me a property where I can leverage that property to pay off that debt right away. Oh, hell yeah. And I can use that creative finance that Joe teaches to pay back that, that debt right away in 90 days. My score goes back up and I'm happy Charlie again. There is a time, there is a place to max out our business. I'm sorry. There's a time and a place to max out our personal lines of credit and our credit cards. But you have to know that time. You have to know that deal. But that's what they're there for is for you to use them. But you have to have a coach like Joe to show you how to do it right. What is the right deal to max it out for? What is the right deal to go all in for? Okay. PLOX usually, usually require proof of income. However, there are small banks and relationship banks out there. That is the hack. You use personal lines of credit to pay off your 0% credit cards. So you pay minimal interest. Then you get a 0% credit card to pay off the HELOC or you leverage your property, get creative financing on that to pay off your, HELOC, uh, your personal line of credit. Guys, it's just moving money around. You have to learn how to juggle this stuff. It's a science. It's an art. And once you learn it, that's why people charge $20,000, $10,000 for these programs. Guys, I hope you really understand what you're getting right now. Connect the credit union. I'm not making this up right now. There's a $100,000 personal line of credit if you qualify. Will everybody qualify? No, I'm not trying to get you excited. But what happens if you do? What happens if somebody right now has their actual shit together watching me and can qualify for this? Joe, what could they do with a $100,000 personal line of credit? Well, off if they hard pull, off if one they, hard pull. If they stay tuned to after you after your credit pull, I'm going to show them exactly what and they can do. Because it's unified. This is one of the banks that I got a personal line of credit with no docs required. Now I didn't get fifty thousand. I got fifteen thousand, but that was in the beginning of my credit journey. Signature line of credit goes up to fifty thousand dollars. If you have bad credit, this is a great place to go because there's tons of credit rebuilding products here at Unify as well. Their credit cards go up to 50K, the personal letter, uh, their personal uh, lines of credit go up to 50K. And there's a ton of different credit products there that help you rebuild your credit. Phenomenal bank. The only downside is this doesn't have a business banking. I would have to double check about Connect. I'm getting old, but Unify is only deals with personal products. Okay. But that's 50 rip right there. 
Okay, so this is 150,000. I don't care if you guys want, I mean, I have an entire list of more. How about instead of me trying to charge you 10 to 25% to get you funded, I just teach you how to fish for your damn self. High lines of credit, I got a ton more. I'm reserving those for people in the mentorship out of respect for my team here in Radical Nation. All right, 0% APR credit cards. Here's what you need to know. 0% APR credit cards are interest-free loans. Put that in the chat. 0% credit cards are interest-free loans. However, again, I'm going to tell you to be careful. Personal lines of credit and 0% credit cards, if you max them out, you will be in utilization hell, so you better have a plan, okay? Now, when you have a plan that works and you're with somebody like Joe and you found the deal, freaking liquidate them. Go all out. Get as many of these cards as you can when you don't need them. So when you need them, you can use them all together and nothing can tell you no. How do you like that financial freedom? But they don't want to talk about this because radical and contrary. Don't max out your credit cards. Okay, bitch, like why? Why? Why wouldn't I when I'm going to profit? I'm so over the mainstream cookie cutter answers, the political stuff. Most financial advisors have got corn cobs stuck up their ass. They absolutely don't know what they're talking about. The 401k is the biggest scam on earth. Get a self-directed IRA, get whole life insurance, do velocity banking and infinite banking, get learning your cash flow properties, build wealth, man. Stop with the cookie cutter blog stuff. Stop with the travel hacking. Stop with the, the reels and the stories about travel hacking and start doing reels and stories about how you're actually doing things in life. Stop with the facade. Stop with the mask. Do the work. 0% cards are amazing debt weapons to get quick liquid capital. One of these ways are balance transfer checks and convenience checks. We can talk about that more later on. Those that know, know that those are amazing, okay? But they're even more amazing on the business side, which we're gonna get to. Balance transfers and purchases are different, so you need to know that. All right, so 0% credit cards with City, they're the king of it. They have four cards right now with 0% offers on purchases and balance transfers. Oh my God. So if you actually use the credit card that you have, and I know that you have one because you watch my channel and I'll call you a liar if you say you don't have one, okay? You can use this as a balance transfer, okay? The, what I love about City is all of the, all the credit limit increases are a soft pull through the app. Not through the phone, not through the website, through the app, just like Navy Federal. So if you have a City card, go ahead and soft pull to do a credit limit increase. And check to see if you have any hidden offers of 0% because they offer them all the time. Most of the time, you'll have something what they call a flex loan where they can actually offer you a loan off your line of credit. But or again, again, warning to you, this is a revolving line of credit. So even though they're breaking it into a loan or making it into payments for you, it's still going to reflect on your utilization. I am not trying to overhype and you know romanticize. It will go against your utilization. Okay? So... Flex loans are for specific purposes. In this situation, if you wanted it for a couple months and the balance transfer to business credit card, hey, do your thing. But I love City because they always have 0% offers on purchases and balance transfers, soft pulls on credit limit increases, flex loans available. I love City. They're just not sexy to people. But hey, dude, I like what well, works. Let's look at the one. This is the king of 0% for City. It's called the Diamond Card. 21 months of balance transfers at 0%. I mean, my God, we might have a new president or we might have Biden back again, but bottom line, you're going to get 0%. So the, the, the election will be over by the time you have to pay this back. 15 months balance transfer, 0%, 15 months on purchases for 0%, cash back on this card too. So get some cash back too. I mean, it's great. Guys, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. 12, 12 months balance transfers, 12 months purchases. But guys, look at this. Look at this. This joker right here. There was something about this that I liked. Uh, 21 months on balance transfers. Let's go. We have 21 months of balance transfers, 0%. I said like the diamond card. I had a double, double slide there. Sorry about that. We also have Wells Fargo, okay? 0% personal credit cards. This one right here goes uh, 12, 21 months APR, same thing. Now, what I love about Wells Fargo, I know everybody hates Wells Fargo. I get it. They're crooks, they're thieves. But listen, dude, I've built the most amazing relationship with Wells Fargo. I'd be damned to have to see if anybody has a better relationship with them in this chat than me. Okay. I started off with the platinum card. Then it went into the active cash card. Okay. That limit is up to a $30,000 limit, all from soft pulls. Was approved for $10,000, got it up to a $30,000 limit to build up my portfolio. 
All soft pulls never did a hard pull. They give me 0% offers all the time on it. So if you're trying to build your profile, you need these cards that give you credit limit increases that are soft pulls because you never should be getting a hard pull for a credit limit increase, okay? You build relationship on the personal side, you'll get a crazy relationship on the business side. They, I have even know people that got a $100,000 personal loan. I didn't put this in the slide deck, but a $100,000 personal loan with no docs required just by being a personal customer of Wells Fargo on the loan side. I'll say that again. I know somebody specifically that got a $100,000 personal loan because they did personal banking with Wells Fargo with no documents required because they saw the behavior of the banking relationship with the customer. 100 grand, no docs. Use it for whatever you want. There is power in relationship. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Again, we have more about this in the mentorship. Personal funding. Now, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this thing called credit stacking. Oh, God. This is where it gets juicy. Let me get some coffee real quick. Google credit stacking. You're going to find every parrot and fraudulent funding company. Don't tell me you do funding. I will call you a fraud. Okay? Everybody put fraud. Funding company equals parrots. Throw the parrots with funding. Funding companies, parrots, credit repair, parrots. We're going to teach the culture. And we're going to put these companies out of business. Until we step up against them, they're going to keep and taking advantage of our communities. Okay? I could be freaking rich if I did this, but I'm not. Because I care about people. I want to teach you how to fish. I don't want to fleece you. Credit stacking, you always got to know your data points. You can credit stack yourself. You have to have a funding plan. You have to map out your strategy. Remember, every six months, we're going to go for funding with all three bureaus. If you do this a couple times, you're going to build out a crazy portfolio. And if you do this smart, and I can teach you how to do this, we can set you up where you're only getting credit cards that do soft pull credit limit increases. So you can take those $10,000, $5,000 limits up to 50 k on the personal side. Which then, when you go for the business funding, they see that, damn, Wells Fargo gave them 50, Chase gave them 50, this, all this stuff. And then they give you more, okay? So you want to make a funding plan and you want to execute these applications at one time. And when I say one time, I mean within one to two hours. This is why. When you apply for these products, you're applying through bureaus, which I'm going to show you the funding sequences. Okay, I'm going to go through it with you. You're not applying for all these things with the same bureau. You're targeting three products with Equifax, three products with TransUnion, and three products with uh, Experian. You'll say, but won't they see the inquiry? No, they won't. Because different banks pull from different bureaus. So if I'm applying with Navy Federal, they're not pulling Equifax. They're not pulling Experian, unless I apply for a business card with a uh, Navy Federal. But the bottom line is, is you have three bureaus that you attack with three different products for three different hard pulls. And then you pull back. Okay, that's called credit stacking. I will teach you it all in my program. If you want it, that will pay for the program by itself. My program's $1,500. Over 641 mentees, over 80 master classes, over 4,800 minutes of content, and a lifetime access. Personal funding sequence, Experian, personal line of credit. We're going to go for a $40,000 personal line of credit from Unify. And we're going to attack a $25,000 card with Wells Fargo and, and Bank of America. And we got the data points for that. Three hard pulls, one pull. We're going to go first with, we're going to go first with a PLOC with the first pull. And then we're going to go two and three with Wells Fargo and Bank of America, it's gonna give us $90,000 in personal funding. Does everybody understand how we can get $90,000 in personal funding with three hard pulls? Yes or no? It all no. looks like yeses to me. Okay, so you're telling me that you could just take this slide right here and have $90,000 for your life and for your business. Amen, hallelujah, okay? Do not remove your inquiries on your personal. Do not listen to the parrot. Can I remove my inquiry when I apply for it and I didn't get it yet? No. You never, ever, ever, ever dispute inquiries on open accounts. Never, ever, ever challenge the inquiries on open accounts. Ever. I don't care if you have a card and you applied for another card and you got denied. Never ruin the relationship by lying. Don't defraud the bank. Do you understand me?
Here's Equifax. So this three polls, when you do these three polls, TransUnion doesn't see them and Equifax doesn't see them, right? So you got $90,000 and TransUnion and Equifax don't know about it. Why? Because they didn't report to your, your bureaus yet. The hard poll did just on Experian, but the accounts haven't hit the actual profile. That is why car lots always want you to buy more cars at one time because they haven't reported yet. So it doesn't go against your DTI, right? I had some idiot say car, that car salesman, I almost called him out on the sales floor. He said, yeah, the more cars you get, the better credit you get. What the hell? Because somebody says, I heard that when you get a car loan, it helps you build your credit. He's like, yeah, the more car loan, the more car loans you get, the better credit you get. No, dude, the more funding you can never get approved for because your DTI is trash. Well, that's another story. Equifax. We got a personal loan with DCU. If you don't know DCU, go to my channel. DCU, I think they're out in Massachusetts. They're open for everybody. Pretty good credit union. Sometimes their customer service is a little wonky, but whatever. We're going to get a $30,000 personal loan with them. But Joe, check this out. They don't start collecting payments from them for 60 days after they open their account. So they have two months of cash flow before they even have to make their first personal funding play. You can get, wow. get $30,000 from DCU and not have to make your first loan payment for 60 days. Do not bitch and complain about the money to invest in yourself. Use the bank to invest in you and then take that money and go make money and get real assets. Stop buying these stupid courses. Buy a mentorship. You understand? 90,000 right here. PenFed is going to give you 0% credit card. 25,000. You can get 25,000 from City. Okay. Well, Red, Red, not everybody's going to get the $90,000. Okay, bonehead. What happens if you get half of that and you get 45,000 and 45,000, you're still at 90,000, right? Yeah, knucklehead. Don't come at me. Miss me with that stuff. We understand that this is going to be ideal credit situations and not everybody has that. But let's go back to the numbers. If you get only 45,000 and 45,000, that's 90,000. And I got the disclaimer here. Don't wipe the inquiries because the parents are going to tell you to do that to go get more funding. They're cute, you know? It should be models. TransUnion. Okay. I have a $50,000 loan I told you about Navy Federal or the home improvement loan, whatever one you want to do. This one's no docs, right? 25,000 Elon Financial. We're going to break that joker down in a second. Okay. And the business side, 0%, that can go up to 21 months. $25,000 Platinum. Why didn't I say the flagship card, guys? Because the Platinum 0% on purchases at times. You want to double check because it can go away. So don't fact check me yet. I definitely think it's on balance transfers right now. Okay. So you got to check that out. But what you do is you start with the platinum to get the 0%. And then once that 0% goes away, you call them up in a year and say, hey, I would like to do a product change into the flagship card. And then you do a credit limit increase. And that card goes up to $80,000. This is information you don't want to know. It's not worth $5,000, right? To get $100,000, you wouldn't pay $5,000? And that's just off, Joe. I can't become a real estate investor because I don't have the money. You know, I'll save up in my job and one day I'll buy a house. You'll waste your whole life. You'll waste your whole life. Time is the biggest asset every rich person values. Ask Warren Buffett. Ask Steve Jobs. Ask my mother who's in heaven right now. She wishes she had more time with me. She died at 53 years old from stage four cancer. Do you understand that life is precious? You don't have the much time to be waiting around. You have to implement and use every single thing in your life that you can to get your purpose across. This is not the time to play games. Two hard pulls, $100,000 in personal funding. 25, 25, 50, that's 100. Oh, damn, everybody's going to get 100,000. Okay, knucklehead. Then let's just say you get 25,000 total. 25,000, 25,000. 25,000, you're still at damn near $100,000 that you have for real estate investing to do what Joe tells you what to do. You don't get this, man. There's no freaking program out there that has a dude like him teaching my students real estate and having his own mentorship as well. Because I wouldn't have put Joe on the platform if he wasn't a man of integrity, if he didn't have results and if I didn't bet him. 
And why bring a stranger in when I already have carrots growing in my backyard? You understand? Greatness is sitting in your backyard in your own household, but you're overlooking because you're looking for a Kardashian. Bars, bro. Personal funding, back to this day. Here's your, here's your funding, guys. $270,000. Like I said, nine hard pulls. 50000 from Navy Federal. 25000 in the credit card. 25000 We already went through that. It's 100000 40,000, and this goes up to 50. I was being conservative. 0% Wells Fargo, unexperienced. And then 20, uh, then, then uh, I didn't mean to put 250,000. I'm sorry about that. A zero got in the way. I'm used to zero. That's a big one. Okay. 25, 25, and 40 is 90. 90 plus 100 is 190. Plus another 90. Okay. My math is wrong. Do your own math. But that's the bottom line. You can get 250. Right. This is another 80. Equifax is 80. Yep. That you guys, you literally can get that. Okay, Brad, I'm not going to get that right there because that is for perfect credit. Well, not really. It's for good credit. But if we want to be conservative, how about half of that limit? Would $135,000 change your life? Joe, you're going to show them what they can do with $135,000 just for per This is not building business credit. You have no business. You have no business credit. You're just leveraging your damn name. You're not leveraging your capital. You're not leveraging your assets. You're just leveraging your social security fucking number to get $135,000 in funding. You tell me, can you afford this? I'm not scared of the offer because it makes sense. Do you make sense? Fuck net 30s and no PG credit. That's a scam. That's a scam. All right. We are going to leverage your personal credit but we have to build out the damn report. That's why we go back over to here. We're going to focus on the personal side. It may take you a year. Yeah, good things take time, but wouldn't you want to build it right, Charlie? So that way we can come over here and do some big boy moves. Everything takes time. You can't rush art. This is an art form, okay? We're going to start here. We're going to build your score and build your resume. We're going to get funded right. Guys, I have, a, I have a module that's seven hours long of how to repair your credit without credit repair. Yep, absolutely. I have another eight-hour call in my program about the biggest credit secrets and myths that we did for eight hours. Eight hours, okay? That's a shift of a day, okay? I do more work than you work at your job, okay? Uh, how to build your credit from scratch properly. I, I don't know what else to say. This stuff can change your life. Business funding requirements, okay? We go up there. We're going to leverage our personal credit to co-sign for your business and personally guarantee the debt. Yeah, that means you're going to put your name on the line like a big boy, like a big girl, because you're in business and everything's a risk. When you walk out in California, you could drop out in the ocean. When you go down to Florida, it can be eaten up by a hurricane. And when you're in Texas, there could be a drought and you can never have an ounce of water again. Life is dangerous. Get over it. Take risks. Walk on water and make your shit happen in life. Okay. The debt for your business, which builds business credit fast. This is what you need. 720 plus credit score. For, we're going for business funding now. This is not personal credit. We're going for business funding. We need a 720 plus credit score. And the worse the economy gets, the higher the score. We need four reporting primary trade lines on your credit profile. Not AUs. Don't come at me with these AUs. Okay. Less than two inquiries per bureaus in the last six months. And less than two new accounts in the last six months. That's your framework. No late payments, no collections. If you got those, you got to work on it. Got to get in the group. Stop paying credit repair and get into a program that can actually help you. No bankruptcies, nor foreclosures. You know what's so crazy, Joe, is once they learn this financial literacy, they can get people into subject to deals and wholesale and all types of stuff. They can tell people financial literacy, hey, you know what? You're going to lose your home right now, but you're not going to lose the war. You're going to lose this battle. But this battle is going to put you into a nicer home because we're going to save your credit. You're not going to have a foreclosure on. We're going to take over the payments and we're going to pay you and work out a deal so you can live rent free for the next 12 months. We're going to take over your home. We're going to rent it to you. We're going to, do, we're going to be creative in solving your problem. You're going to give us your failing property and we're going to take it over. We're going to solve a problem. But how can you have this conversation if you're not able to articulate it? Welcome to Radical Marketer. Okay. Here's a business. Uh, investing strategies. After I show you this, there is no reason for you to not invest in real estate. Damn, Joe doesn't even know this information. 
Joe just knows how to buy a shit ton of real estate. Joe does, Joe joined this for this right here. Is that true, Joe? 100% true. <laughs> okay. So Joe does not know all this, what I'm about to show you. But Joe can tell you how to leverage this. Joe, how many real estate investors are properly using business credit in real estate investing? Less than 10. Okay. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how much you really want this. We're okay. going to leverage OPM, other people's money to build wealth. Business credit is the major cheat code. Okay. He said less than 10%. I said over 75%, you know, whatever. Okay. So I guess it's less people than I know about, nor are they familiar with business credit. It's overwhelming. I don't have a business. This is all this bullshit. You know, they don't know what they don't know. Okay. Once you master building business credit, it's game over. So what are the types of business credit? Okay. We're not going to talk about business loans here, guys. We're going to talk about business credit cards and business lines of credit. We talk about the business loans, the SBA loans, the high income funding, all that type of stuff in my program. I do not have the bandwidth to talk about it. We've already been going like four hours, but I will go over the two sexy topics that all your favorite parrots talk about. Let me see the parrots in the chat. All right. What are the benefits of business credit? Business credit does not report to your personal credit. 90% doesn't. The ones that do, Capital One, TD Bank, I think Discover too. That's all I can think of, okay? You get three to five times higher the limits than your personal credit. And you're gonna be able to separate your business from your personal so you can get your ass sued off. Why? Because the moment that you have money, people are gonna try to sue your ass and pierce the corporate veil. If you don't have your accounting right, if you're commingling funds, if you don't have holding companies and asset protection, your ass is done. There is people that literally target rich people and just sue their ass off and have them pay a settlement. Tell me I'm wrong, Joe. No, 100% right. That's why we do a whole set, set on asset protection and LLC formation. You can even legally get business credit without owning a business. Let me show you how. Just apply for business credit cards as a sole proprietor. Leverage your personal credit. No funding company is needed. Interest-free loans. And it's, this is a difference. The personal business credit cards is 0%. They reported it to personal credit, right? They went against your, your utilization. These don't. So do not fall for these scams. Ready? Charging people 10 to 25% commission fees for applying for business credit cards is unethical. Amen? Yes or no? There's the parrots. So there's the parrots. Funding companies, you know, no name people that talk about million dollars of funding and 0% cards up to $250,000 in minutes. It's all 0% business credit cards that you can apply for yourself. You can learn it from me. You can learn it from Credit Plug and Herb Official and Mr. Credit Gems. Those would be the four influencers that I would recommend to you. They have the relationship managers that they call up the banker and they push the deal through. If underwriting comes back to them, they just do it all. This is the key to all these people getting these in cards at 75,000, this and that. They promise their relationship. We have relationship bankers in the program. How easy is it to get 0% business credit cards? Well, you can get one right now. Let's talk about it. What do you need in order to get 0% business credit cards? Not much at all. Business credit cards, what best places to get 0% credit cards? Let's show you. Well, for those of you that have American Express, you can go get one right now. Soft pull. You can max this thing out and it never hurts your score. Go I get you. Know, I did not know this until Dan told me. <laughs> okay. They can go to Nate. They can go to American Express, get the Blue Business Plus card or the Blue Business Cash. It does not hard pull them if they're a customer. If you're not, it'll be a hard pull from Experian. You can max it out. You can buy the program. But you have 12 months to pay for it. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. Also, if you have American Express cards, you can do a credit allocation, meaning you can move your personal limits to your business cards. You can, if you have $30,000 on the personal side, you can call up Amex and say, I'd like to move this $30,000 limit to my business card. Your business card gets approved for $10,000. Now you have a $40,000 business card at 0%. Dude, that's going to be a game changer for somebody. And you can combine this with charge cards. There's so many card charge hacks I can't even put on here. There's, there's ways that you can. 
oh man, there's, there's some crazy hacks that have not been talked about and that people do not know about. We'll talk about that in the program. Plum card. This is one I really love for real estate investors in e-com because this does not have a preset spending limit. It's algorithmic. I can never say that word, but you can have a hundred thousand dollar limit on a plum card and basically spend a hundred thousand dollars and you only have to pay 10,000 of it in 30 days and the rest of the 90,000 in 60 days. Meaning you have to pay 10% of the balance in 30 days and the, the remaining 90 and 60 days. So this is a really good bridge loan card. Cause let's say, let's say that you got the DCU loan, right? And you don't have to make your first payment for 60 days. You don't start using this plum card to the moment you have to start making your payment from your loan, right? You got to be able to move the money around. Debt weapons are debt weapons. They all have their purpose in your quiver. Uh, we have a, Joe, you don't even know this, but we have a business banker from US Bank that joined our program and had no clue about business credit. Did you know that? I did not I know a, that. I have a business relationship banker that he texted me the other day when I was in Australia. And he just said, hey, listen, if you have any clients that need business funding, I can get them high limits on the business cards because I only work with the business cards. But go ahead, guys. Go, go ahead and apply in your applications. You'll get less limits because the business relationship bankers are the key. And I don't need any of your money. I just need you to invest in yourself and, and add a value to my community because other people are waiting for you to show up. 0% business credit cards. There's four of them with Bank of America, Joe. Four. These are the four. I didn't even know that. There's a secured business credit card that actually builds business credit. You guys didn't know that either. And I mean, you guys know about the four cards in your, in your business name. So I think there was a girl, Robin, I think her name was. She asked about how she could refinance her car. Go to Bank of America, open up a business account, right? And then refinance your car. Move it out of your personal name. Piece of cake, done in a day. This is Elon, okay? Not that Elon, okay? But this is the Elon at 0%. Chase business ink cards and Elon financial cards are what every funding company is using right now, charging you 10 to 25%. So when they easily get you this massive amounts of funding that's so simple that I'm gonna show you right now, they're literally taking advantage of people. Sad, man. This economy, no single mother deserves to pay $10,000 for them being able to apply for their own credit card. And if you think so, you don't have a heart and you're a horrible human. Business cards do not go against the 524 rule with Chase. Do this with a relationship banker. That's the way to do it, not online. The business relationship banker talks to underwriting directly and you can bypass the 524. So if you're 10... 24, you have 10 revolving lines of credit in the last 24 months. The business banker can bypass that with you. That's what they don't tell you. And they can submit that right to underwriting. And you can do a credit reallocation just like you could with American Express. Wait, Dan, they can do, you can do the Chase, you can, you can get around the Chase 524 rule by applying for a Chase business card? Yep, but these are only business cards. Business cards bypass the 524 rule, but it's got to be done with a relationship banker. Did not know that. And 0%. If you guys go in the Facebook group right now, this is probably going to be a parrot. So don't fall for the parrot shit, right? I'm going to have a shirt with parrot shit. Don't buy the <laughs> parrot shit. Let's see if you guys buy my t-shirt, okay? We got to get this message out about these freaking parrots. We have a parrot problem in the world, okay? It's a problem. And credit repair is, a, credit repair is the red parrot. Funding parrots, the Verde parrot, okay? I woke up to this today. If you don't believe me, go into my own group. This gentleman, uh, Damon, he may be a parrot or he may be a person, I don't know. But he was approved this morning for one of my new businesses. This sounds like funding companies in my group. I got to go through and purge these termites, man. So hopefully he's a good human. Go check it out. You got 75K off that card, Joe. 0%. What could you do with that? Oh, baby. You're going to see it in a little bit. You understand that my group is so valuable that the funding companies and credit repair companies go ahead like leeches. We're going to kick them out, though. We're going to get rid of these jokers in the, in the Facebook group. Now that I'm hiring a team, get rid of them so you can financially learn and grow without being manipulated and without being taken advantage of.
you better watch out who you're talking to in the Facebook group because they may not be who they seem to be. These type of posts are usually to have people DM so that way they can have a consultation so that way they can sign them up for their funding program, their mentorship program and credit repair. These people don't just really offer this advice unless they're like a great human, humanitarian. There's not a lot of us out here. Okay, so just be aware. Don't fall for the pair of shit. Okay, we got a lot more of that in the program. Let's talk about no doc, low doc programs. What is a no doc program? A no doc program is getting a business line of credit without having to give any documentation whatsoever. No profit and loss statements, no tax returns, nothing. Okay, there is credit unions, there is banks that will do it. You need to know the data points and what to apply for, when to apply for it, and which banks to apply with, and which relationship bankers would be great to work with. Some of them need that, some of them don't. Low doc programs are one year tax returns, three months bank statements. That's a low doc program. A full doc program, profit and loss statements, two years of tax returns, your, your, your kids' you know, DNA, uh, your wife's social security number. I'm being facetious, of course, but they're going to ask for everything from you. So what is the easiest way to do real estate investing in 2023? It's not creative financing, it's BLOCKS. Mixed with creative financing. Not business credit cards, BLOCKS. Why? Because a BLOCK is a personal credit that doesn't report to your personal credit profile, which doesn't report your utilization, which doesn't drop your credit score. And you can get some big boy business lines of credit. Let's talk about it. Key things you got to know. No doc, low doc programs are disappearing fast due to the economic conditions, but they are still there. Gurus will tell you the uh, uh, due to the crazy money. Oh, the, basically, the, the, this is huge, guys. They gatekeep this information because they want to sell you their age corporations to use these data points to get the massive amounts of high limit funding that they can. So they do the age corp game and they do the funding companies and they're protecting each other so that way they can get stupid rich off of people with the commission fees. This is what parrots do. They sell age corps and they do funding companies that do credit repair. They're all the same bastards. Every one of them. If you're a bastard on the call, sorry, you're a parrot. Be a good human, get a different job. Okay? No doc, low doc programs are the holy grail. And you do that again with relationship bankers. This right here is the Wells Fargo business line of credit. It's not what I made up. It's what it's on the website. Okay. I got 65K. Hard pull from Experian. I'll take a hard pull for 65K. Would you? They didn't ask for one document. They're actually, actually asking me if I want a credit limit increase from it. You tell me. Soft pulls. It's right there, guys. Right there. Unsecured. You secure nothing. Tomorrow, you better be in the call because tomorrow we're talking about secured stuff and that's going to even get sexier than this stuff. You guys want to know more about that? I got two videos on how to watch it. Go watch it. Go leave a like. First Citizen Bank, you guys can go watch that video. I break down the data points. That's a no-doc program as well. But we have a ton more no-doc, low-doc programs that I'll be breaking down next month for everybody. Mentees, you get excited. You're going to be able to have that. Credit to cash methods. We have secret credit to cash tactics, but out of the respect for the mentees in this room, we will only talk about this within the program. But there are legal ways of doing this. There's many people that will tell you to invoice your friend and then trust that they invoice you. That doesn't work. People's merchant accounts are getting shut down. We have horror stories about people joining different parrot groups and telling people to liquidate their credit cards through QuickBooks. And what's the other one out there? Melio and cash app and paypal they're getting their merchant accounts shut down they're losing their credit cards they're getting three-letter agencies calling them because when you're trying to liquidate cards and remember anything over ten thousand dollars is reported to the irs by the banks by the way that's called the secrecy act but there is a fine line between money laundering and manufacturer spending you better be careful what you're doing we will show you the right ways to do it and the legal ways to do it. You go to jail, you get caught up in all these different problems. The crazy thing, guys, is anybody can get out of prison, get on YouTube, regurgitate information, and scam your ass. Tell me I'm lying. 
you know, there was a good prophet. You can call him the son of God. You can call him the prophet. You can call him the God man. He said, you will know them by their fruits. What's true? What fruit is that tree producing? I know I'm the cursing Christian. I curse like crazy. That's fine. I'm passionate. God loves me. Okay. But you're going to know people by their fruits. What's their consistency like? How are they showing up for other people? Rad, but you haven't been on YouTube in the last year. Yeah, because I've been taking care of my program and my mentees that paid me $1,500 that I've helped people 100,000 X their investment in more ways than one. You tell me. I'd be damned if I take people's money and don't deliver. I fucking deliver. Business funding. Experian, here we go. We're going to a B-lock. We're going to get 50K, uh, 60K from Wells Fargo. I did it. You can do it. I'll tell you what I did, how much money I ran through the account. Then we're going to get a $50,000 Chase business card using a relationship banker. And we're going to use a $30,000 Amex Blue Business Plus card at 0%. Does everybody understand how I just got $140,000 using three hard pulls from Experian? Yes or no? Some people, because these report don't report to the credit, and this is up to you. I don't tell people how to be mor morale. I'm not the morale police out here. I'm just trying to get rid of the parrots, okay? But the bottom line is, is these do not report to your personal credit. So it's going to hard pull your personal credit, but it's not going to report these trade lines to your personal credit, which means people get the funding for the business side, and then they go wipe the inquiries, and then they go for another round of funding in 30 days. So this could actually yeah. be 2x, 3x, 4x in six months. You can literally rank up $500,000 by doing that. So 140,000 business funding, three polls. You could wipe them and go for it again with three different banks. Here's business. Citizens Bank, 50K. First Citizens Bank, 50K. These are B-locks. Then you're going to do two for the price of one because Truist, check this out. One poll, you can get two Truist cards. 0%, right? You got to know where these things pull from. That's part of knowing your data points, right? So you get 40K from Truist using one hard pull. You do one hard pull from Citizens and one hard pull from First Citizens. You say, Dan, that's three hard pulls, but what about NIH SCU? NIH SCU doesn't have a debit card. So when you do banking with NIH SCU Credit Union, you can get a massive credit card at 0%. That's a soft pull, not even a hard pull. Did you know that one? Nope. And most parrots don't either. Okay, can the church? I say didn't that? even know. That. <laughs> so there's 160,000 plus 140,000. I hope your life has changed. I don't want any excuses when we get to the sales page. TransUnion, I will not tell you this lender. This lender right here, I will only tell my mentees. We will talk about it next month. This, this lender will give you $100,000 business line of credit when you run $25,000 through the account for 90 days, three billing cycles, 90 days, 680 credit score, pulls from TransUnion on the personal side, no business credit established, three month old LLC, 100K business line of credit automatically approved, no underwriting. I'm done. I'm fucking done. $465,000 in business funding with nine total pulls. You can max these lines out for real estate. Does not report to personal credit. You build your personal, then you can build a freaking kingdom. And then you go to Joe and say, Joe, how do I leverage this for real estate to build crazy wealth and use your creative finance strategies after that? You will be your own bank and nobody can mess with you. I hope this is changing your life. Is your mind blown yet? Is it registering business lines of credit, 0% business credit cards, 465K, there's your funding play. That's just one, just one. But once you know the data points in the business credit game, the sky is the limit. Do not tell me excuses that you can't afford this program. Tell me you do not want it or you do not value it. Let's just keep it real. Don't ask for a payment plan either. Use for a 0% credit card. Own it. Recap. Here we go. If you don't want to do the business side, there's 270,000 right there. There's 465. You build this first in the first year, you get this in the second year. We got to build this in stages, guys. 
This is what we do in our program, by the way. I don't know if you guys like this style. If you guys rather have the regurgitated marshmallow stuff, go for it. Yeah, it's like Thursday mornings with with Rad instead of Thursday evenings. Uh, this is yeah, this this is our like normal call tonight too. But I'm yeah. spending time with the Facebook group. All right, so give me a second here. Spend. I want to spend at least a couple minutes before we go into Q and A. I want to show them people kind of give them blow them up a little bit to show them if you utilize dan the stuff that dan just taught you because we do everything with no money okay but we're going to take a couple just a couple of minutes we're going to qa let me run you through this okay let's go to screen share let me give you some examples this is where i left off right kick let's let's talk about a couple of things that that uh dan you see my screen right yeah i see it. i'm just getting some coffee man i've been talking a long time no go ahead i'm good deploying money for maximum results and in, in this if you're going to go in and you want to spend this time do this this is all you're doing is taking it taking uh real estate investing and uh putting it on steroids i know i use that a lot but i don't care because it's true you're deploying money for maximum results if you want you don't need the money to do it yeah i'm not going to lie to you we're not this is stuff this is not fluff yeah having money accelerates that process no doubt about it and I mean, let's just take a look at, he was talking about, let's just use a couple of examples, 50,000 available. Let's say you had 50,000 available. That may seem like a lot. If you just watched what Rad showed you, that shouldn't seem like a lot at all. So I think he got that thing up to near half a million, uh, which was crazy. I didn't even know much of that stuff. So I, actually, I didn't know most of that stuff. Okay. He, he had 50,000 available. Let's just run through this right quick. He had 50,000 available in, in, in credit with first thing you do, find a fixer for sale for $250,000 that requires $50,000 in repairs and has an ARV. This is the after repair value of $400,000. Okay. So this place you need to buy for 250,000. It needs 50,000 in repairs. It's going to be worth 400,000. Okay. So you're going to be 300 into a $400,000 home. You put, if you have 50,000 available, I would just go ahead and put the 25,000 down, down towards the purchase. Find a 250,000 hybrid mortgage. Remember, we talked about this before with our private money lenders, right? Right. You got to, you, you can do this. It, it's very, very, this is well within the range, well within the range. You get a $250,000 hybrid mortgage from, because we need 300 total, remember? Because our, this is a hybrid, because it's going to, it's going to require the remodel. You got 25 down, apply your remaining 25 and the lender's 25 towards the remodel cost. Okay. Boom. There you go. Now you've got the DSCR refi finished project for $300,000. You that, that means you refinance the property for $300,000 cuz we know now know that it's worth 400,000. We bought it for 250, we put 50 repairs in. It's now worth 400. We know this all things. So, follow me on this one. And let me know if you, if if I move too fast through this. You've just spent 3 to 4 months after you start this project. Three to four months, you start the project, you now have funds to do two more projects. You follow what I'm saying there? Because you started with 50. You started with 50. You just made 100. Okay. Three to four months after the start of the second project, three to four months after the start of the second project, you now have the funds to do four projects. This is about your $50,000. Let me know if you follow me on this one. Okay. Nine to 12 months, this isn't a year, folks. Nine to 12 months, you own seven properties, you have $700,000 in equity and $2.8 million in value. You've exceeded your $3 million in a portfolio in a year. And by the way, $700,000 of its cash. That's what you can do with $50,000. These are the things I showed you before. These are the exact same deals that I showed you before. We're now just accelerating them by you being able to access fifty thousand dollars that dan's going to show you how to get you want to see some you want to see some more let's say you got a hundred thousand dollars available We're, by the way each one of these things that we do you can do the same things we were talking about before just do more of them but i'm just going to give you a different example in each one okay this is this is kind of cool because dan and i talked about this one time uh and i wanted to share it with you guys he said once he asked me one time what if i had a hundred thousand dollars available what, what would you advise me to do this is what i would advise him to do. It's what I advise anybody to do. We take $100,000. We spend $5,000 on a marketing campaign, a marketing strategy that's going to attract zero equity homeowners. What are zero equity homeowners? These are the people that we talked about that did FHA, VA loans in the past two years. 
that have maxed out their loans. These are loans that, you know, 97 to 100% and the homes have no value. I'm saying they don't have any value. They don't have any equity. They have plenty of value. They don't have any equity. They owe as much or more on the homes than when they bought them. Okay. This is people we're going to be attracting through a sub two uh, uh, campaign that we're going to be doing. Now we find we'd spend $5,000 on marketing to do that. We find the best 18 positive cash flowing homes and we employ our sub two strategy. Okay. That going in, we're helping these people out, helping them out of the position, show them how they don't have to go bankrupt. They don't have to go into foreclosure. They don't have to do any of these things. We're going to show them how to save all of this stuff and be, and, and be able to turn around and buy an, another home in 12 months or 18 months or whatever the hell it is. This works all the time with no money. We're going to find, spend $5,000 on marketing because we don't have to spend any money on marketing to do this. We're going to spend $5,000 to do it so that we accelerate the process. We're going to take the best 18 that we find, the best 18 that we find. And what are we going to do? We're going to add an incentive of $5,000 to each homeowner to accelerate your offer because they're going to have, they, they may have other offers. Other people are going to be doing this as well. So it's all going to, it's all about personality. It's about marketing. It's about relationships with people. This is how you're going to get these deals. You want to bypass that and accelerate it? Just offer them $5,000. Offer five thousand freaking dollars, and they don't care if they hate you. They're getting five thousand dollars out of a property that they don't have any equity in, and they're going to be able to go get that moving truck or rent that apartment or do whatever the hell else they want to do. Your five thousand dollars is now going to accelerate your offers over any of the other ones that are going to be at zero, including yours that you that you're going to be doing at zero if you didn't employ this. You quickly accumulate eighteen properties, and the median price of property in the United States is three hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars, national average. You have a portfolio of $6 million there. Do the math. You have a $6 million portfolio. $6 million portfolio. You just spent hundred grand to get it. You now have an appreciation, depreciation flow of $500,000 per year. Listen to me, people. You, have a, you, have, you got your appreciation, depreciation flow of $500,000 a year. You spent $100,000 to get this, which easily equates, I showed you earlier, about the other one, this easily equates to a $1 million ELOC cash position. In other words, you can get an equity line of credit or just take the freaking cash. Someone would definitely pay you because this is a 2X. This is only 2X. It's worth three to three and a half Xs, but it's, we're going to hold it 2X. A 2X on an equity line or a cash position. Just get rid of it. Sell it for a million dollars if you want to. Sell it for a million dollars. Boom, it's gone. You made $900,000 off the $100,000 you just spent. How much damage can you do with a million dollars? We talked to those before with 500. How much damage can you do with a million dollars with an equity line of credit or cash when you got here with 100,000? You started with 100,000 instead of zero. See what you did? You just 10X the whole thing. Cardone special, you take the first $100,000 profit, you repay your contribution. Remember, you spent $100,000. Take the first $100,000, pay it off. Boom, paid off. Whatever you do with your million dollars, if you get an ELOC, you're going to pay it, whatever you do first. Again, we can do the same thing and just do it on a massive scale. The first $100,000 pays off the $100,000 that you spent. The rest is all yours. And then I put a PS, by the way, the $6 million portfolio is still yours too. You're still making $500,000 a year in cash flow. $500,000 in cash flow, folks. Yeah, with $100,000. And you just paid yourself off. And you now have a million dollar equity line. Yeah, unless you sold it and you just took the million dollars and walked. Would you want to do that? Would that work out for you? Yeah, I think it might. I think it might. This is the exact same situations we talked about earlier. We're just now accelerating them. We're blowing them all up with the, the credit that Dan's finding you. You got 250 available? Okay. Well, again, we can do the same things we did before with 50 and 100, but let's take it up a step. We're going to do a HUD multifamily rehab purchase. What the hell is a HUD multifamily rehab purchase? All right, HUD's housing and urban development. They have these things on their website. We can go out and buy them. Uh, these are places that have gone bad. They, went, they were mismanaged. They went back to HUD. They went broke, so forth and so on. They're, you can find them around the country. This is one specifically that's available right now. There's 40 units. The purchase price is a million dollars. The rehab bid is setting, HUD has a rehab bid. That this is the remodel of the property that's going to take to bring it back into compliance of $1.5 million. Now, HUD has guaranteed that they will take every one of these units, 100% occupancy at $1,087 a month. 
So they're saying, hey, you come in and do this, fix this place up, skip this bad property off our hands, fix it up because we're just, it's not what they do. So somebody else do this and we guarantee that we'll fill it 100% occupancy. And if, you, if there's not 100% occupied, we're going to pay you for 100% occupied. Okay, great. Now, the HUD sponsored, you're going to do the 95, and this is a 2.5 million, remember, 2.5 million is what we're into this thing for. HUD is going to sponsor a 90% hybrid loan at 6.68%. So we put our $250,000 up on this project. Okay, we're going to get 90% of it. We're going to get a 90% loan for everything from HUD themselves. HUD's going to back this thing. So we're taking out that payment on that loan at 6.68%. It's going to run us $15,000. Just do the math here. Just You can just go, go through this pretty quickly. Property taxes, water, maintenance. This is our, our monthly cost. It's $33,000. All right. $33,000 is what's going to be costing you. Here's your revenue. You're $250,000 into this thing. 40 units, we know what they are. There's your rents. There's your total costs we did from the project before. You're cash flowing $10,500 a month at 100% occupancy that HUD's guaranteeing. You're, you're making $10,500 a month off of your money. So we've invested $250,000 into this thing, and we're going to see $130,000 a year and a return. Is that a good return? I think so. That's over 50% return every year for as long as you keep this property. These are nice numbers, but honestly, they're kind of thin. You think, how could it be thin? That's, that's, that's inhuman. No, they're kind of thin because what else can we do? And everything in real estate investing comes down to what else can you do? What else can you do? You want a 50% return on your money? That's a pretty damn good return on your money. I think we can do better. We go out, remember we talked about JVs, limited partnerships. We do a joint venture with a corporation looking for tax deductions. Now, remember, we have a $2.5 million tax deduction set up in this property because that's you can, you can deduct it over time. You can also accelerate that tax deduction and front end load it to about 30% in the first year. That's a conversation for a different day. Uh, we go out and we look at this thing. 30%, by the way, of this would be $800,000. Okay, great. So we sell it to a corporation. We JV with a corporation looking for a tax deduction. It could be an individual. It could be anybody. You, you can sell these things really, really easily. It's done all the time. We sell that whole tax deduction portion of the thing. We can't sell it. We have to joint venture. Uh, we have a joint venture with a, with a corporation to take ownership. They get the tax deduction side. They pay $500,000 up front for this. They're going to pay $500,000 because they're going to front end load their tax deduction and take $800,000 in the first year. They're going to make $300,000 in the first year off of their contribution. Who the hell's not going to do that? Right, exactly. Everyone's going to do it. Now, what are we left with? $250,000 profit. Because remember, we just sold our tax deduction over the life of this thing for $500,000. We're $250,000 into it. We take $250,000 profit, pay ourselves back. We got $130,000 a year net operating income. We just showed you how you broke that down and $125,000 a year in appreciation on a 112-year average. Are you guys following me on this one? You've got $250,000 profit. We paid ourselves back the $250,000. We're still making $250,000 a year off of the net operating income and your appreciation rate. Making $255,000 a year, and we have $0 into this deal. We doubled our original investment. We already made 250 grand off that. We paid ourselves back. We're still making 100% a freaking year on an investment that has already been repaid. And we're still making 100% per year on the same investment that we turned around and now did somewhere else. Want to know what you can do with $250,000? You guys, you can do it all. Okay, now, are you, are you ready to leverage some 0% credit? Are you ready to leverage some 0% guys, credit? Guys, my brain hurts. This is just wow. There's no gatekeeping here, boys and girls. <laughs> this is what well, we do. No, whether you join or don't join, I love you. I appreciate you. There's no love lost at all. There's no manipulation tactics. Literally, I'm just trying to serve and help out somebody that served me. I'm very passionate. I yell a lot. I'm extroverted, okay? I'm crazy. I'm radical, all right? You get to kind of get inside of what our mentorship is like. It's super fun. 
don't take me yelling and cursing like I don't love you. I don't care for people. I absolutely love and care for people. And I just hope that you see that. So I'm done yelling, but I just, I want people to understand that I'm really trying to bring a change in the financial community and even in the real estate space. And so I'm trying to find people with the same core values and the same outlook in life and the same transparency to change this system because it's not fair, it's not right, and it's really nasty, man. It's really, and there's so many ways that you can make money without doing credit repair and funding and ripping people off with crappy courses. Like, do unto others as you want to be done to you. Like, I, I didn't even know if I had the capacity to do this challenge with everything I have going on right now, but I really thank you for being here through hours of your time today. And I hope that you got something of value uh, from this that you could take away, whether you join or not. Love to have you. We want you. We don't need you. Um, but with that being said, let's take questions. I hope you guys understand our heart behind this is to truly, truly serve you and not to just have a, a, a crappy webinar. All right. So let me take on somebody first here. Let's go. To